Hey, everybody. Welcome to Devon County, your source for all things Lovecraft Country. I am your humble tour guide, Anthony Sterling. And joining me today, I am happy as a pig and you know what. I have, what, one, two, three, four amazing people who are joining me to talk about HBO's horror series, which I'm going to call it early. One of the best television shows of 2020. And once again, that is Lovecraft Country. So let me get to the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to meet poet, mother, amazing friend, Miss Gadir McHale. She's right there. <laughs> also, this chick here, if there's such a thing known as ride or die, she is the true personification of it. She is one of my, no, she is one of my ultimate ultimate best friends love her dearly she ain't got the proper lighting but y'all can still <laughs> see her lovely visage my best friend miss melissa newell aka candy newell because that's how she introduces herself to everybody so candy newell say hello hello everyone hello all right let me go see now, if i can find the proper light outside well <laughs> stay right there because you, you ain't got good wi-fi stop there <laughs> Next. The shade. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm excited, so I'm gonna be very shady. <laughs> Super makeup artist. What 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 else can I put on your resume? Uh that we don't already know. What else you do? Come on. I do facials, I'm an esthetician, and mm -hmm. I'm a massage therapist. And, and resident nerd. Not just because she <laughs> wear glasses. Yeah. She's I'm a Potterhead. There you okay. Well, you know. And I still love Twilight. <sighs> Once again, I know better <laughs> books with better characters, and oh well, none I of was, them, none of them come from you know, turned I into was, a Fifty Shades of Grey like, crap. No, I'm joking. Uh, can I just interject <laughs> here real quick because yes. you know what? There's a French saying, and I don't know anyone who, on this call who speaks French, but what is that French uh, saying that you can't account for taste? So, Ashley, I, I take it back, mm -hmm. my little slide look there. You like Twilight. Thank you. I like Twilight. Ashley, Twilight. Ashley, no, I love her. No, no. <laughs> Ashley, no, I love her. But we all know <laughs> vampires aren't made of glitter. No, way. I'm wrong. The Lost Boys, they were made of glitter. I forgot. So. Yep, they sparkle. They did sparkle. Oh, sparkly. Who doesn't love a sparkly vampire? Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> look. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> she is standing by her love. She is standing by, she is what, team? No, you team Jacob. I'm team Jacob, so yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, well, all right. If we're going to, yeah, <laughs> go with the wolves. Go with the wolves. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the lovely, the talented, Miss Ashley Burrow is joining us. <laughs> I'll put sound effects and make it better. Now. We've, I've already praised this person, but I'm going to do it again because she is my friend. We were college buddies. She is an amazing actor, director, writer, singer, songwriter, better known to many as, to me, as Dana Gorier, but to some of y'all, she is Miss Cora. And I ain't talking about Tyler Perry, Miss Cora. I'm talking about the good Miss Cora who told Miss Jenny goodbye when they shot her ass across the room. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are the one and only Miss Dana <laughs> Gorier is in. Hey. She is a tour guide for us. How are too? <laughs> How are too much? Okay, and excuse us, she is in LA. She is doing LA things. She is in her car going to somewhere prominent and popular and important. Um, she is also doing a lot of auditioning because actors, they don't stop auditioning. So I thank you for giving us the time. And like I said, when you get that Oscar, 
you're going to call all our names. Yes. Starting with me. <laughs> but you're going to call our names. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Dana Gorier. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> she, I'm telling you, she's in that car looking at her phone like, oh, boy, shut up. Just, <laughs> just get with the damn show. <laughs> so, and for that, I will. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Devon Country. Let's get into it. We are talking about the first, the premiere episode of Lovecraft Country titled Sundown. Mm -hmm. My friends, my fellow tour guides. Light. Look, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, she want to show off she's in New Orleans. So <laughs> she want to show off, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You, I don't know you how don't you. don't want to boom. show off. I would just say all of this turned 48 on Thursday. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Man. Happy birthday, Black Don't Happy Crack. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but before we actually truly get into the show, I do want to give a disclaimer because, ladies and gentlemen, and I love saying ladies and gentlemen because I respect everybody, but this show deals not only with horror as a motif of horror, monsters, scary stuff, but it also deals okay. with the true horror that has been infecting our damn country since its beginning, and that is racism. And we will be talking about that bitch like it ain't nothing. So, please, if you feel offended, 9 out of 10, you're probably one of the problems. If you're not offended, enjoy, be a part of this, like, subscribe, comment, put comments at the bottom. Let's get into the conversation. So, with all that being said, let's get into it. Episode 1, Sundown. I'm just going to say it off the top. I put away the book because that first scene phew, took me for a loop. So first scene, loved it. Jackie Robinson clocking the crap out of Cthulhu. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Tears, happiness, joy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it brought me. But it also brought me to the point of we're not in Kansas anymore. Right. And for me, this is horror in, th in, I would say, in the Black experience. This is our interpretation of horror. <laughs> and yes, because it's Lovecraft Country, everything is based on H.P. Lovecraft, but we all know O.H.P. was a P.O.S. Right. Thank you, Ashley. He was a P.O.S. Mm -hmm. And he was very racist he did have a poem called let me see if i remember it uh some about niggas <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep it like that you know on the something of niggas you know and mm -hmm. on I the creation no... of niggas let's thank just you keep, let's keep it 100 you know thank me you. i'm gonna keep it 100 no please do we, we have to i i agree with you and let me just jump start by saying i love absolutely love how metaphor heavy this is, yeah. and especially through the black lens, because speaking of H.P. Lovecraft, which there is some debate that, oh, he changed because later on in one book, he actually had positive things to say about a black family. Well, I'm gonna leave that all to the side, but the fact that one of our heroes, Jackie Robinson sat there and just, like you said, obliterated Cthulhu. This is the point that we can take something and subverse it and use it to our own good. So I thought that was so rich with metaphor that here you are, you racist SOB, but yet I'm already just blow you out of the water, destroy you and take everything you did that you thought you used against us mm -hmm. and use it for us in a positive way. And I thought that set the tone for the show. I mm -hmm. absolutely loved that the game, number 42. I loved it. I thought that's the way I'm going to extend the, 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 the metaphor here, the cliche. That was a way to knock it out of the park, to, mm -hmm. to draw me in, and I was there. Mm -hmm. I was right there. Yeah, it, it was one of those moments where I had saw, a, I watched a review, but they didn't give any spoilers. And they were talking about, well, you know, when we see that first scene, I just stopped thinking about the book because I read the book twice, and that's not a brag or <laughs> boast. Um, if you don't know... This, this show is based on a novel written by Matt Ruff. And, you know, even though he is a white guy, 
a white author, he really did capture a lot of the nuance and the truth of what, you know, what, what racism is, what racism does, and the fact that he was able to bring in the um, horror elements. I thought it was really sweet. But the way Misha Green did this first episode, I just looked at my book while this was going on and I just put it to the side. I say, I ain't even going to look at the book no more. I'm not going to compare and contrast. This is a new, fresh look at how it should be. And I'm, and I was happy with what she did. So I love the fact that they had that scene because, and I'm I'm not going to take too much time on this, but it reminds me of, remember when you were kids and you heard that something bad happened and you wish that a hero was there to stop it. Mm -hmm. It remind me so much of that, you know, um, the world's coming to an end and things are crazy. And we all saw that Atticus was right there in the middle of the Korean war, mind you, Mm -hmm. all hell's breaking loose. He comes out of the trench and now it's war the worlds. So, all of this madness is just culminating and building up to just, okay, I can't get out of this. Who's going to save me? And it's one of the biggest heroes, Mm -hmm. Atticus to many, who comes in and saves the day. And it really remind me of um, a comic I was reading, a Black Panther comic from the 70s, where one of the main characters, her mom was telling the story about a distant, well, not a distant cousin, but a cousin who was a sharecropper or excuse me, a former slave. And he got into it with uh, the Klan. But while she's hearing the story, she's putting the Black Panther in it. And the Black Panther and her cousin saves the day. Like he doesn't die. He fights the Klan and takes them out. So I was like, damn, it's kind of like how I feel with 2020. I'm looking for the Avengers or somebody. Right to save our asses where is wolverine with the healing power to 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 stop the the rona you know stop the rona in his tracks but Mm -hmm. alas we live in reality (laughs) we don't have that so i I was really appreciative of how she did it overactive imagination yes black people do have imagination you hear that terry gilliam we do think Mm -hmm. we do have vivid imaginations we can do that we can think of ourselves as superheroes damn it and i but i still love your movies i'm not gonna hate you all right that's enough for me good there ashley dana come on bring it what how did y'all feel what, well what i loved is in right after that y'all hear me oh yeah i hear you we hear what you. I was, the scene after that where he woke up and he was on the bus and they showed two perspectives of black people and how they feel with current you know i think it was kind of letting the audience know that yes this man who envisioned all these creatures and stuff was a racist Mm -hmm. and the black woman who was with him was telling him that regardless of the story it's still the reality of the situation Mm -hmm. and so i love showed two perspectives of how black people can think about things. Like he's just concentrating on the story where she's worried about the author himself. Mm -hmm. And why is this a Confederate or there's no such thing as ex Confederate um, general, a Confederate person who was fighting for slavery. So Mm -hmm. there's no, you know, and looking at the times of today, we're still have that same perspective. Like we're taking down statues, but that doesn't take away the laws that are still in place now that you know what are we supposed to care about the statues are we supposed to care about the treatment you Mm -hmm. know and i think that was just a good scene and you know dialogue you know that you can compare today and then yeah and i i I do love how tick you know kind of told it it it, he didn't say it like out you know out in the open but Mm -hmm. look this is all this is all we got you know, this is what's been given to us. So I'm going to find some entertainment, some happiness in these stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the sins of this dude is messed up. True, 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 true. But he is on a distant planet. And right. It's kind of cool. You know, yeah, it's still kind of cool. Yeah, this guy is trash, but it's mm-hmm. still kind of cool. And and I agree when, when she told him, you can't put X in front of uh, Confederate. There ain't no such right. thing. That right. scarlet letter stays with you. 
Right. It, run, it runs in the blood deep. Exactly. I was about to say, in your family. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But like, at one point, like, I get all that and I get, because I agreed with her, you can't put in, I agree to Ashley's point, like you're saying, that there, it's in the blood deep. But at some point, and this is what I think also that that scene showed is what we, especially as black and brown people, are called to do. We mm -hmm. are extraordinary beings. Because to me, it takes an extraordinary being for everything we go through then, now, currently. And here we are. At what point do we, I'm not going to say extend grace because I'm, I'm not that big yet. A lot of it, I don't extend grace to them folks. Mm -hmm. But at what point do we say, okay, where is the redemption? Because yes, he was Confederate. Yes, he did all these evil things and horrible things that we still that still resonate to this current moment. But in in the story, in the book, as in now, is this his redemption? And do we allow for that redemption? And that's just questions we have to, you know, right. ask ourselves as black and brown people. At what mm -hmm. point do we allow for that redemption? Do we allow for that redemption? Mm -hmm. At right. what point? can we say and it's like ashley said statues yeah you're right those are symbols and symbols matter but is redemption let's just say i'm gonna throw this out here we get reparations that that's a marker for me you're truly on the road to redemption now because now you're economically which has been something that has faced us and has mm -hmm. caused hardships you're economically trying to right that past that right. you're and, and 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 one thing and i don't want to jump too far ahead mm -hmm. i also love that this shows people, non-black and brown people have a tendency, oh, that was back then. No, 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 no. That's your granddaddies and your great granddaddies. Right. It's not even a hundred years ago. Right. So, you know. And it, it, it won't get fixed until that acknowledgement happens. And the same thing with fiction. Sometimes we have to take the good with the bad, or do we? Can we separate mm -hmm. artists from art? Mm. Which is question with the Cosby thing and the R. Yep. Kelly thing, but now for that, you know, personally, yes, we, we, we're not going to separate it. It's just going to all go, <laughs> but yeah. I'm kind of sad. Time, <laughs> this, is, this whole show is about separating art from the artist mm -hmm. or, yeah. it, or is it, you know? Well, and, and with that, I kind of think it's more of, it's the biggest F you to the artist. If right. you really think about it, the mm -hmm. fact that this black man with a baseball jersey and a bat right. <laughs> took out one of the most powerful That's creatures yeah. and ideas yeah. that you created, one of right. the old gods, not yeah. the god that everybody hooting holler for, but one of right. the originators. Mm -hmm. The fact that with one downward swing, with buzz look, Jackie Robinson had turned into one of them bar from the Magnolia. He became a head busser. <laughs> You know, I, saying, the whole subverting the whole thing. That's what, yeah. I, that's what I just alluded to earlier. It subverted it. It turned it up. You know, Again, and, for and, us to do that, extraordinary. I'm, right. I'm going to give us props. That we, extraordinary. Right. We're some of the most extraordinary beings on this earth. I say mm -hmm. what I said and I mean it. Yeah. And, and you know, I, like I said, props to Misha Green. Yeah. For just saying, you know what? I, I'm going for it. I'm going to, I'm going to go at, I'm going to go even further than what Matt Ruff put in these pages. Right. Because mm -hmm. now words, when you, like, when you read the book, you can kind of have a vision mm -hmm. of what's going on. But when you actually see it in action, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go. Let, keep, keep taking me on this, this visual journey. How are we going to tell this tale? And mm -hmm. the fact of <laughs> with, with um, taking the lady in the bus, I like he said, it, it's two generations, if you kind of think about yeah. it. Yeah. The younger generation, the older generation. And when she say, oh, well, we just passing over a bridge named after a racist, you know, after yeah. a racist and this, that, and the other. And you just see Tick like, oh, okay, yeah, well, by Jim Crow and him sticking the bird, that's mm. us. You know, that's the, that's the youth now. The rebellion. You know, the yeah. rebellion, you know, like, here, yeah, middle finger to you. You know, F you, Jim Crow, I'm going to the promised land. Mm -hmm. And we all know that even the promised land wasn't the land of milk and honey at all. You know, like, you know, because 
the great migration to Chicago, which they don't really talk about in the book, nor they may not even talk about in the series. I, we don't know yet because this is episode one. You see, I, I, I like to say a black metropolis when, when, he, when he gets home. You know, right. you see um, a store, a corner store with a black owner and black mm-hmm. cab drivers and, you know, just black, unapologetically black. And what, what came to mind was two things was, oh, man, that's somewhat of a utopia. And then I said, well, you know, Amos and Andy was a utopia, too, even though it was racist as hell. <laughs> it, it, it was a utopia, because if you ever saw the old Amos and Andy shows, they had the same situation. The whole town was black. I mean, I think it took place in Harlem, so it made sense. So... <laughs> With, with, with that being said, it made so much sense. But at the same time, you, you, you know, I sat there just going, all right, let me see how they're going to make the characters truly interact in the environment that, she, that they're being put in. How close to the book it's going to get and how far is, you know, because we keep saying Misha Green, if people don't know, Misha Green is the showrunner. She is the most important person in the writer's room with the directors. Don't believe, you know, believe the hype. She is the show. So, you know, I want to see just how far she is going to push that envelope, you know. Mm -hmm. And so far, my goodness, did she. And like I said in my intro, the horror, the monsters were not the sugar we all know who the monsters were. <laughs> and, you know, Stevie Wonder could see that blindfolded in a blackout during the snowstorm. We right. know who the bad guys were. So, right. I'm sorry, Gadir, um, you saw the episode, you saw it <laughs> later. You know, I, I had to find my ways for you to get it. <laughs> no, I but, really um, thank you for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, thank you, too, because, woof, man, it, it was <laughs> hell to find it. No, but, no, uh, it's okay. Um, there is a lot of like like um melissa was mentioning earlier you know symbolism and um you know you you get to see from him how not only in his dream or nightmare if you will but like in person when they um you know he, he was a veteran and even in that moment um they let the white people on the bus but they were they had to walk he and the lady and um it just shows you that big like then and now it's still the same just modernized you know um i didn't want to jump too much into it yet because we're still in the beginning but i have a lot to say (laughs) um Mm -hmm. in the middle you know and towards the end but yeah and that, yeah. that's, that's fine. Um, I just need to do a quick little disclaimer. Um, sadly, we had to let Dana go. The, you know, the madness of L.A. took over. So she's going to be back next week, guys. And um, I'm, even if we have to find a way to virtually tie her down, she will be here to join us. <laughs> um, Everything's virtual these days. It'll yes. be all right. Yeah, yeah. it'll be all right. So um, right. let's see. For me, I... I was looking at it at the changes and I hadn't, we, we really didn't even talk about what the show is about, but just a quick, quick synopsis. It is based on a novel. It is about a young man named Atticus Black in the show. He's Atticus Black. Um, and he finds out his father is missing and he decides to go look for his dad and comes to find out he has to go into the Northeast, which is known as Lovecraft country and all hell breaks loose but fun and enjoyable hell. So, and he has a secret about his uh, lineage. There's some secret about him and his family. What it is, I can't tell you, and I won't. You have to watch. (laughs) And then watch us to break it down and tell you more (laughs) about it. So it's, it's, um, I would say it's like a Greek, a a Greek tale, maybe the Odyssey. Um, was it the Odyssey that had the guy that was in love with his mama? No, right? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, we black. We ain't worried about them. Uh, them old. Wait, it was the Oedipus complex. Is yeah, Oedipus, Oedipus, was it? yeah Oedipus, I think that was the Odyssey. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's the Odyssey with no loving of mothers. 
that, that <laughs> you know, it's none of that, none of that going on. So that's the whole basis of the show. But the characters, there are many and they are diverse, even though they are black, they have, hmm, how can I put it? They're just amazing. Okay. And I want to get into the characters. We've already introduced Atticus. Um, if for a little backstory, he is a Korean War vet. He is young. He is black. He is a nerd. Okay. He yeah, is- I would also like to add, Anthony, he's an idealist. That's a very important. True. He is he's an, an idealist. idealist. He is an yeah. idealist. Thank you, Melissa. Um, he is a lover of the sci-fi and horror. Mm-hmm. He is a he is a person who truly understands, like Ashley said, can you separate the artist from the art that was created from it? And it seems like he can. I think he can. I think from what I've seen in this first episode, he doesn't sit there and go, oh man, I really love Lovecraft. No, he understands Lovecraft, Edgar Rice Burroughs, and all those cats, even H.G. Wells, had their problems. So I think he's a he, he's a very smart gentleman. Then there let's is say, excuse me, Anthony. Let's just call it what it is. They had their racism. I don't yeah. like calling racism a problem. You know, no, yeah, it is. It's racism. Yeah, it's not um, a nervous. It's not a nervous tick. It's a sick. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> there is also <laughs> right. Um, we were also introduced to um, Uncle George played by the amazing Courtney B. Vance. And um, sorry, Atticus uh, Black is played by um, Jonathan Majors, amazing actor. Um, One movie you definitely should check him out in is The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Oh, yes. Beautiful acting. Beautiful acting by this brother. Um, Definitely check him out there. Uncle George by Courtney B. Vance. Courtney B. Vance, no matter what you put him in, he's always going to be somebody uncle. Even when he's a leading man, that's <laughs> Uncle Courtney. Okay, and it's not a joke to his age. It's just the way he carries himself. He's, mm-hmm. you know, right. what I love about Uncle George, he's a business owner. And he's a very, very adventurous human being. And the thing about his business is it's a very dangerous business because he writes for the... um Green book. The green book, which, yes, that is the true green <laughs> book, not the one with Mahershala Ali, even though. Yes, I'm sorry. Mahershala. Thank you for saying that because I think that uh, Lovecraft Country has given us the green book that we deserved. Ex- right. Yes. <laughs> and Thank you. Let's make that. <laughs> next. No yeah. white saviors. None. Exactly. Let's do the, the green book as it should be done. Or right. we can play that. Okay, sorry. And no, no, no. And like I said, business owner, family man, father. Um, I I hope I pronounce her name correctly. Um, Angene Ellis, I believe it is, plays um Hippolyta. I say Hippolyta, but they say Hippolyta in the show as his wife. And what I love about her, she is very independent. She's a she's a mother, she's a wife, but she is yeah. also a strong woman. And mm-hmm. damn it, if she wants something done, it's going to get done. She, you know, that's awesome. Um, let's, let's just call it Journey Smollett. <laughs> that, that, Tisha. That, Letitia <laughs> F. and Lewis. Um, she, plays, <laughs> she plays Letitia. And the first time you see her, she takes the screen. She takes the show by force. And, it, and you can't fight it. Such a great actor. But I have to say, um, and give me a second because I want to pronounce this sister's name correctly. She plays Ruby, her sister. Um, I know it's Wumi. Wumi, and I can never get her last name. Don't hate me because I'm not from the continent. So y'all just going to have to bear with me. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Okay. Wumi Masaku plays Ruby, her older sister. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't get much of her, but you can already tell she's a force. Have, they, she's a force, but the sisters, 
have something yeah. going on. Oh, go ahead, Gadir. Can I say something? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. So in that scene, um, something that stuck out to me was how, like, even in, in this time um, where, you know, light skin queens and the dark skin queens mm -hmm. are always in rivalry. Um, you know, the, with that, even them playing sisters, you know, she came needing a place to stay and her sister was like only two days but it's, you know not looking out for each other is more like like a battle within you know mm -hmm. um yeah that and that that dynamic is in the book if anybody mm -hmm. read the book it's there but there is something and i'm, I'm not gonna jump the gun but I, I got a feeling they're gonna do it we're gonna learn a lot more about ruby we're gonna learn a lot more about Let's just call it the, the, the trauma of being dark skinned. Oh, and, so and, they do play up the scene. And I would like a deer. The one mm -hmm. thing I did notice is that there was no, at least how the scene was played to me, mm -hmm. there was no colorism. And let's speak because we know right. black and brown people from mm -hmm. uh, uh, colonization and everything. We do know that colorism was introduced and right. whether it was slavery, whether it was in South America, mm -hmm. the African continent, any, you know, because mm -hmm. right. on that continent, it. there's colorism. But I found it interesting because I kept waiting for them and that seemed like a deer saying mm -hmm. to allude to the colorism, but the right. way they played it, they didn't show it now. Now I'm not saying it won't come later, but mm -hmm. to me it played more as like, the irresponsible sister versus mm -hmm. the responsible sister. Right. And I took that, now I'm not saying it's not going to happen later, but I took that as a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, show me, but then again, I'm a fan of, of, of showing me, not telling me, but then again, I'm also a fan of not, don't show me everything all at once. Right. Build up to this. And I, I appreciated how they directed and played that scene. Again, not saying that the colorism aspect because let's face it, it's about black and brown people. It, it's gonna come out at some point. Mm -hmm. But the way they played it, and especially if you notice in the scene where um, Atisha got out there and she was singing with her sister, you know, you didn't see the men all of a sudden who've been hollering more for the lighter skinned sister. It was right. like, even with Ruby, they were giving them both their props. And I thought, this is a breath of fresh air. And I was right. holding, I was like, oh my God, the colorism bomb's about to drop. But it didn't. Right. It right. didn't. Not right. to say it won't. But right. it did not. Well, mm -hmm. me being a man. I appreciated that as a black woman. Because I well, believe all, all across the diaspora, black and brown, you know me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to talk on as a guy. Um, Ruby Vine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reduce it to a man. Oh, he's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm going to reduce. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If Nothing like a big butt, huh? If it's a sauce, I will thicken it. Oh Lord! Okay. No, Ruby. Um, what what I loved was that they were both beautiful. Yes. You can see with Letitia. Letitia's very um, how can I put it? Um, fiery. Fiery, but at the she's same always been red. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but if you notice, you the makeup artist Ashley. She's she's decked out. She right. Her face is red um, lips. Red, red lips, skirt, red nails. She's she always on had point. on it every scene. She she's the the hot chick, you know, and I, I don't like saying chick, but she's the um she's the bad she's the looker. She's the badass, but she's also right, right. the looker. But if you notice with Ruby, the way she was lit, it it really did bring out the mahogany of her, the ebony of her, the blackness, mm -hmm. like. You know, even in the hot, you know, in the hot weather, because they were sweating, the lights were on and she was well lit. Mm -hmm. she, was, she just looked great to me, you know. No, Ruby was sexy. I got it. Let's talk about what you just mm -hmm. said. Uh, Letitia was the looker. Yes, she was. But it's like this. There's that smoldering, mm -hmm. serious mm -hmm. sexy. That's what I got from Ruby. Mm -hmm. Right. In right. your face sexy, I got from Letitia. Right. Right. But right. also... This bravado is, versus mm -hmm. yeah but it also it's kind of the dynamic yeah. of that that era if you really think about it you know like when you see those old movies the the looker and this is where i say colorism did play a part you see leticia leticia's out there she's in front she's bomb you know like you say ruby is very maybe reserved, reserved with hers she knows she's sexy. She knows she's a badass. 
but I don't have to throw it out there for you. You right, see right. it. Her aura is there. Mm-hmm. With Letitia, mm-hmm. it's in your face. You have to constantly be like, ooh. Like you have to, like you, you, you gravitate to her, but at mm-hmm. the same time, you're being pulled by Ruby as well. Hers is more of a silent killer. And when it hits, mm-hmm. you, ne- you never see it coming. But I, I really like that because that dynamic is very of that time. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the hot, the fiery one is always front and center. You're always supposed to look at her. It's almost like um, a Marilyn Monroe versus a Audrey Hepburn in some ways, you know. And, or a but, Dorothy Dandridge Dor- versus... Okay, yeah, Dorothy Dandridge yeah. versus... Versus um, a Hattie McDaniel. Because Audrey, oh. I would give Audrey classy, but I, sexiness is to me that that confidence mm-hmm. right so i'm not saying audrey wasn't but audrey's more right. like the pixie-ish you know yeah she, but, she's like the girl next door yeah and that's I, what i, I like was like trying to say no Ruby. shade to audrey but i just yeah dorothy right. dandridge yeah that was the, perfect right. thank you okay dorothy dandridge versus maybe even okay. a, a lena horn uh, oh, um oh, yeah. Yeah, Earth the Kid. Yeah. Earth the Kid. Oh, now we well, talking. Yeah, yeah name but, Paul Ashley. But, name. but then, but then you would have to say Letitia is Earth a Kid. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's Ruby yeah. is Dorothy Dandridge. You know, because exactly. Dorothy is very calm, reserved. You mm-hmm. know, she's beautiful. You know, she's strong willed. You know, she's right. she's everything. But mm-hmm. Eartha is yelling, so you got to pay attention to Eartha. I right. demand, mm-hmm. I demand, I demand your attention, and you're gonna give it to me by any means right. necessary. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and that was like, and I agree 100% with Melissa. The the dynamic between them was more sisterly, right? Than it was, oh, you brought your high yellow ass home. You right. know, the money done ran <laughs> dry. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you know, oh, you couldn't it didn't find... help with the funeral. <laughs> exactly. You know, oh, you couldn't... His mama funeral. Well, right. and, and that... That it was an issue. <laughs> well, that's an issue with any black person. Yeah, I know. That's you, what you, you miss Big Mama, mama. funeral. But you're going to come to the past. <laughs> exactly. You, oh, oh, you're here for a plate? You could have right. cried with the rest of our black asses. Right. You know, so it's just one of those situations. <laughs> Where you're like, don't do mama wrong in, in the black community. You just don't. Yeah, you know. No, no. Dead Dad, or alive. Right. Dead or alive. Daddy? Fine. Whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah, he paid the bills. Yeah, he put a roof over our head, but he did. Who cares? But mama? Don't disrespect mama like that. Mama gone. You should be there. So it, it was really cool, you know, and they did introduce Marvin. We only heard his name, which is their brother, mm-hmm. but there's a lot going on with that as well. And like I said, I really hope. Too? Oh, no, you'll see. Uh, okay. But I do want to talk about a quick change from the book into the show because it is a ma- one of the main characters in the book, and that is the offspring of George and Hippolyta, which in the book is a son named Horace, but in the show, mm-hmm. it's a daughter named Diane. Oh, okay. And at first, you know, when I first... thought about it i was like oh man i hate that they changing the damn names of this thing i want you know because atticus turner nice atticus black i hate that but when i saw that they made such a big change in in horace and made him or made him or her change the name to diane you know they could have called her harriet think about it harriet tubman harriet come on if we're going black heroes let's go (laughs) right that's just me but, but um, Anthony, real mm-hmm. quick, excuse me, but you know why, and I know where you're going with the black heroes and the names and all that, because like I was saying, I'm always going to go back to the symbolism, the metaphor, Hippolyta, look who she was yeah. in mythology. And mm-hmm. Diana, I think, was the hunter, huntress. The so hunter. Yeah. all of this is going to play out later, I'm sure. So I understand what you're saying, but I also mm-hmm. get for artistic yeah, purposes I'm, why they're... I'm very upfront. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it. No, I know. <laughs> I, I, I ain't know. got time for the subliminal. This ain't a Jay-Z <laughs> album. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. But no, um what I what I really did love though is that mm-hmm. they did keep the dynamic of what of Horace. Horace was a uh, artist. Mm-hmm. He had his own comic book. Um mm-hmm. and they brought it in and Diana is an artist and I was thinking about it I said, "Oh. There's the, the I see it. Black women, black creatives. Um Octavia Butler, mm. foremost, mm. there she is, you know, in my mind, there she is, 
that, that, that imagination, that black imagination, that imagination. That's being encouraged. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. That was encouraged. Thank you, Ash. Right. And the fact that they did that, I was like, okay, little, little young girls, black, mm -hmm. brown, you like comic books, you like your anime, you like um, cosplay, look, mm -hmm. there she is. There's representation. Right. And I love the fact, and I'm hoping to get her on the show, the artist who did the art for the show. Okay. Um, and, and I say, and please, please don't be mad if she hears this, and I hope I say her name right. It's um, Afuya Richardson, I believe. Uh, she's a very famous artist. She's worked with Marvel. I think she's done some work for DC. She has her own um, art, wow. thing, um, art thing going. She does a lot of comic um, drawings, some really cool ones. Y'all could find her on Twitter. But um, I just love the fact that they did it. You know, I love the fact they changed it. Because at first I was like, oh, man, I'm going to miss Horace. Because there's a, a story in the book with Horace that is just so good mm -hmm. that I would have loved to see that play out but then i'm like well wait this could still happen and now the dynamic is even deeper because we all know melissa knows i said it on the phone the foundation <laughs> is what black women and if things go bad it's usually it's usually y'all that come in to save the damn day mm -hmm. don't be mad men just appreciate it and i'm not like saying no, mm -hmm. no, and, and I'm like this, just because I have you have y'all on here that is not sucking up, it is just fucking truth. So <laughs> it it I, I love the changes. Um I love the dynamic of everything. Mm -hmm. But let's get into the journey itself. Uh -huh. The ride. Let's yeah. all hop in the Packard <laughs> in the Woody. <laughs> let's take that ride and folks. This is the part where I will say it. I've said it in a group that I'm in on Facebook. Mm -hmm. This is not a travel. This is not a trip through the South, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. This is right. not. He left the South. You don't see the South no more. Right. This is where it goes to show you that Jim Crow's evil ass feathers covered all of America. Right. All of it. It right. didn't stop from it didn't go from Kentucky to, Lew right. to Texas. Mm -mm. The Mason Dixon line did not exist. There you <laughs> go. Exactly. Maybe damn. we can name Boston and a couple other cities that look you swear you wore if you're gonna play that game. Exactly. Right. Or the Dixie. So <laughs> I'm glad thank y'all for saying that. That's it. Thank you. Oh, them damn wings, just like the so <laughs> just like the eagle. <laughs> covered America from sea to sight from what is it? See the shining sea. Shining sea right. Coast to <laughs> coast. Know, coast to mm -hmm. coast. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was horrible. And for the fact that, yes, the first episode is called Sundown, which is based on the sundown towns, which mm -hmm. I was ignorant when I was younger. I always heard about, hey, you need to be out of there by so-and-so and this and that. And I always mm -hmm. thought it was a southern thing. I really right. did. I always thought about that. But once you see things like the story of busing in Massachusetts, Chicago, mm -hmm. you, sh you can't be in a certain area, and, and that's in the city, but, right. there, but there are towns that would say, hey, welcome to so-and-so USA, and in the back of that sign, niggas have your ass out of here by sundown. They didn't, mm -hmm. We don't want you here. Pass mm -hmm. through. Even give a dollar or two. We're going we gonna to treat you like trash, but we're going to take your money. Right. But you need to be out of here. And it, it, it was just like, oh, yeah. You can't. It, it was almost like, God damn, you can't be black anyway. <laughs> there is no safe haven. Chicago right. was supposed to be the safe haven. Harlem was supposed to be the safe haven. And they're not. No. And the journey starts off with mm -hmm. that and then when they take that ride and they wind up in the namesake of this uh show devon mm -hmm. county real quick before we oh, land yeah. what i love <laughs> was the background soundtrack to this whole journey was james yes. baldwin 
Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, brother. Bo- <laughs> I had to rewind. I rewind it. And I was like, let me, I, I have to, because it was just so, um, you know, uh, who it thinks of needed. it? Like, I just thought it was perfect. You yeah. Know, perfect. It is philosophers mm-hmm. that haven't walked this earth. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> yes. And, and you and- know what? Before we go on to, like Ashley said, before we actually land, and again, I'm gonna go back because I think it was Gadir that said, and I think Ashley, you alluded to it too, mm-hmm. how there is no past and present. It's, it's, it's the now, it's all encompassed because mm-hmm. I know on the journey besides the, the, the racist aping him with the banana, mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you all really paid attention mm-hmm. in the background when they stopped at the ice cream place or the little soda stand, and it showed you the black father with his two kids, which I did love and I love, and I have to take a quick aside about how black men are mm-hmm. involved with mm-hmm. their families right? and their kids. Right. You know what, d- d- despite what media narratives then and now want to tell us, mm-hmm. there are plenty of black men doing the work every damn day and being there for their families. So I want to mm-hmm. get that said. And have but always it, had. Exactly. Right, and not just now, but then too. Exactly, and when he's there and his little kids, I think it was a little boy and a little girl, and the woman's just talking, there's a sheriff there, she's serving the white family, all have theirs, and she's constantly ignoring this black man and his two kids. Right. That ripped me apart, because you know what, those two kids would be about, what, 70 today? Right. Yeah. That, that speaks to the trauma. How mm-hmm. do you explain to a child that someone saw them as less than human, you weren't even worthy of an ice cream cone on a ice hot cream. summer day. Right. With it's, good it's not that I think like that mm-hmm. enrage me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is enraging because because yeah. one thing, black, white, or otherwise, to me, there are certain lines you do not cross and children are innocence personified. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm the one who curses you. Fuck with that. You don't, you're nothing to me on this earth. Right. right. When you right. do that to children, because you have now shaped their worldview into something that it shouldn't have been. Mm-hmm. Right. You literally stole their innocence. Mm-hmm. I just, but anyway, sorry, I had to go off on that. But it, that nope. just, now we can wait. Nope. Sorry. Wow. I'm the one. Nope. I am the one on the call. To quote the great Wayne brothers, message. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, you're there. Even, even when Atticus was walking in the town and he saw um, two little boys um signing uh, saying just sign to the to be a part of i don't know if it's like the rotc mm-hmm. right that nature and it's like you know that you know you must be xyz to be someone in in america and and that's not true at all and it, it, that makes me mad too you right. know and so just to see that scene as well, like as he was passing by, because he as an adult was is a veteran and he was just looking at it like in disappointment, like you don't right. know what's waiting for you on the other side. Right. Mm-hmm. My shirt pretty much says it all. Yep. <laughs> pretty You're much. Exactly really right. And we it's shouldn't, almost it, like respectability yeah. politics. Do X, yeah. Y, and Z. Guess what? At the end of the day, you still black. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and, and one of the things now that we uh, that. But too many of white folks, too many white folks still have that mindset. Yeah. I said it. No, it, I mean, it's fact. You yeah. know, we, we can't run, we can't continue to run and keep that blind eye mentality. You know, we can't stay blind to it. We already know, you know. Right. Especially now, like, you know, everybody's so sensitive and, and stuff, but she can't be sensitive to facts. Right. <laughs> I can understand if it's an opinion, but it's facts. It's, it's in history. It's in our faces from day to day, you know, in, in, in everything we do. You walk down the street, it's right there. Like, there's no hiding it. And they don't yeah. have shame in what they do as a racist. So we have to be aware and, and let our children know and, and educate them on the real history, not what's taught to them because, you know, it's going to make it to the next grade or whatnot. But, yeah. you know. Yeah. Ain't, ain't I, something? 100, Gadir. Uh, 100. Science fiction and horror show can do so much. <laughs> 
And uh, once again, uh, you are watching. Welcome to Devon County. I am your tour guide, Anthony Sterling. Right now, we are three. We were four. We were five. But a little technical difficulties. Uh, we should be getting Ashley back soon. Uh, but we're going to go in. We're going to talk about the ride. And there is the moment we are introduced to, how can I put it? The first of many interactions, true interactions with white folks. The bus and the truck, that really wasn't that much of an interaction, but we finally get to see Atticus, Letitia, George set out on their journey and they wind up in Devon County where they meet up with Eustace. good old Eustace <laughs> Hunt, Sheriff of Devon County. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um i don't know who the actor is but kudos to you for being slimy garbage ass evil and hateful you played your part well and i know there's a lot of white actors that sometimes are like oh man when i have to say that n-word i am very uncomfortable but it sometimes have to take a black actor to come up to him and say, look, you're an actor. We have to do this. Suck it up. Go for it. But then it feels like they get a little too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta look at them funny like, hey, cuz. Like, is that really acting? Is that really acting? <laughs> yeah, because you, it's like you say it with your whole soul from yeah. five years ago or something. He, he, so is he, that your granddaddy coming out? Yeah. You know, hey, he, hey, he said it with his chest, his ancestry, and everything mm -hmm. blood to bone. It just it was just true. But we get to meet old Eustace, and well, that interaction has happened in real life. This is not just about the show, it has happened to many a black folk. But mm -hmm. when you think about it, it's always. Oh, well, you know, that, that was the South. That could never happen in New York. That could never happen in um, Boston, Boston or Chicago or even L.A. of all places. Well, we as folk of that nature we are here to tell you that is the biggest load of crap and bullshit. It has happened in even the biggest metropolises. It is not a southern thing it is an american thing live with it if you want to apologize for that go for it if not i could care less but it has happened it has happened to me it has happened to many i know and houston's hunt is the cop and i don't care how you feel he mm -hmm. is the cop that killed george floyd he is the cop that killed oscar grant he is the mm -hmm. cop that has killed Breonna Taylor. He is the fucking cop that will pull you over just because you're driving while black. That right. is Eustace Hunt. And although I enjoyed the scene because it was from the book, the moment he, I'm not even going to say emasculated Atticus. Mm-hmm. He took his humanity. Right in front of, right in front of Letty, you know, and, the and, black and woman. Yeah. Just, he, right. He, he took it away from him. He, he just, he didn't look at him as a grown, <laughs> a grown ass man. Mm -hmm. He didn't look at him as a human being. He looked at him as if he was lower than a dog. And we all know dogs sometimes get treated better than us there's a save the whales campaign but there is no save the black people so it it it, <laughs> it 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 shook me mm. it was expected i knew it was coming but as i say reading the book and then seeing the visual boom it, it was a punch and i was like "Ooh, i can't wait for what's gonna happen to you because in the book, oh, you gonna get it. But once again, Misha Green said, hey, Anthony, 
I'm about to fuck your world up and you're going to love it. And it ain't going to be nothing you're going to be mad about. And I will say, and this is my, this is the part. You know, you are an evil racist bastard when you are still scared of black folks and not the monsters that just took your damn arm off. And another yes, word, another word. <laughs> spoilers, guys. I forgot spoilers throughout this thing. I should have did it in the beginning. But y'all should have watched it by now. Y'all should have watched it by now, damn it. Right. But that we, blew me away. That really blew me away. And mm-hmm. it's oh, monsters sorry, outside. Why are we fighting over the gun? Because yes. I'm black. Why you still have your gun pointed at me? <laughs> right. And and you know what? You got half your arm off. We we the actually rationality of evil and racism. Let that's that true. We went, we went. I, I skipped ahead so far. I forgot mm-hmm. the moment of moments. Mm-hmm. Um, Lydia's, uh, before we get to good old Houston's, mm-hmm. uh, there is a moment where mm-hmm. Uncle George, being like I said, Courtney B. Vance is every is everybody's uncle, wanted to take a detour because one of the guys who writes for the book that he does, which is the safe Negro um, green book. guy, green book. the green book. Mm-hmm. It's a traveling book. If you don't know, it helps uh, at the time it was helping black um, travelers find refuge and safe places where they be treated like human beings. Uh, mm-hmm. They can have a good meal, bed and breakfast, all these places. So it's kind of like um, it was Yelp before Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> but Yelp, black Yelp, or, or black Yelp, <laughs> uh, as we would probably call it, Yale or Yeah, I don't know what we would call it. But um, they they get to Lydia's, and this is where we see Letitia be Letitia and and take. I love it mm-hmm. when she's walking that sidewalk, and there are two ancestors of Karen that pass her. And yeah. look, Letitia gave them, which is a look I've seen in many of those films from the 50s and 60s. You know, the fire mm-hmm. one would always, you know, kind of like mm-hmm. looking at, you know, the, the, the bad seed. You know, what are you looking at? And her look spoke volumes. And it was just like, in my, in my mind, it was like, yeah, bitch, keep looking. But you're going to keep walking. Mm-hmm. You know, you ain't gonna tell me nothing. I am Letitia Lewis. That's all there mm-hmm. is to it, and I keeps it moving. And they get to Lydia's, and some. Once again, you are in, you are up north, above the so-called Mason-Dixon line. You're supposed mm-hmm. to be in the Promised Land or away from old Jim Crow. And like I said, those feathers, those wings covered sea to si- to shine in sea. And they were not welcomed. It wasn't spoken. It was just the body language. Mm-hmm. The, the, that, that poor little white kid in there. I, I, I laughed the whole time with him. His nervousness. Mm-hmm. I was like, did he call him? Did he call him niggas? Like, he was just so scared. And George, being George, was like, no, no. We going in because I'm hungry. And we're welcome here because he took that information from uh, mm-hmm. one of his uh, one of his guys that actually went out there and wrote about Lydia's. And then we come mm-hmm. to find out, as as Tick told him, uh, remind Burnt it down. that Lydia's is no more ashes, ashes, because like Tick asked him, remind me why the White House the White House is white. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they gave us a really good history lesson. Mm-hmm. But that history lesson meant nothing because when Letitia ran from the bathroom. With the tea. <laughs> with she the came with the tea. <laughs> get y'all asses up. We got to get the fuck out of yes. here because she overheard the call with the, the mm-hmm. little guy. And what we now see is the damn fire department. But Firemen. Let's- <laughs> Can we pause just a second? Mm-hmm. Because to me, this is still going on today where you have to keep your head on a swivel yes. at all times because of anything. 
it's something you think you, you're welcomed at, even though this the waiter guy was clearly nervous. Mm-hmm. You have to, the the fireman was aggressive. Yes, you know, this is a person that is sworn to save and protect you from fiery flames, mm-hmm. but he will he got bullets for you because you're somewhere you you deem not belonging. Right. So I just was like, black people have to constantly keep their head on a swivel. Then, now, always, you know. Yeah. And so, shout out to Letitia because she saved the day. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and there was another thing too that I wanted to point out. Um, even like with their interaction in the restaurant, you know, when he basically was like, "No, no, we're gonna stay here. We we're okay here," because he got that message from it was his friend, the mm-hmm. fellow writer. Um, mm-hmm. It goes to show you that, you know, you can hear people's experiences all you want, but unless you go and find out for yourself, you're not going to know, mm-hmm. you know, the truth. You know, um, they can tell you whatever they they experience, but it may it may have worked for them, but not for you, you know. Right, right. And also, I want to point out with that particular scene, um, just uh, let me bring a little bit of womanism in here. State sanctioned violence against black women. Mm. That's the first instance you see of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We talk about all our heroes. We talk about this. And and I'm not saying anyone is called, but a lot of times state sanctioned violence against black people mm-hmm. tends to be at the exclusion of, from a media narrative, of black women. Mm-hmm. It's usually mm-hmm. you hear about the men. So that scene because they very much killed he because remember the little white kid who was fearful and nervous is not because i'm afraid that what they're gonna do to these black people because if he was fear and nervousness for their humanity he wouldn't have made that call. right right he was fearful and nervous because oh wait a minute they're threatening the status quo they're threatening mm-hmm. right. even at that age he recognized mm-hmm. because of what he was growing up around i'm mm-hmm. at the top right so Fuck him. That's what I'm going to say about him. <laughs> right. Making the call. Yeah. Right. Right. But I did like how that 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 was that was very central, important to me. The state-sanctioned violence mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. the black woman. Yeah. And look, we all get it. Mm-hmm. But to me, you cannot ignore gender because who knows if that woman was raped? Mm-hmm. You know, before you know all manner of things. So that, yeah. that, that that gendered violence as well as the racialized violence. And I thought, wow. Here we go. Yeah. So that, that's the two things I took away from from there. But when he was making that call, you know, he wasn't mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. hero or whatever. He's no, no. Boy. He, he could absolutely not. He was um, the great nephew of Karen, <laughs> and um, he was a kin or uh, whatever they call him now, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kevin. You know, now nah, I got a cousin named Kevin, but he's a cool <laughs> Kevin. But, They're uh, called Kevin. Uh, <laughs> oh, Kevin? Okay. Yes, well, Karen's and Kevin. Kevin. Karen's and Kevin. But I will say this, though, but if you look at it, the, I, I can never find a word strong enough for racism and its tentacles and everything. I, I come, insidious kind of comes close, mm-hmm. but it's beyond insidiousness. Yeah. Like, here's this, this, because the only, I mean, he was young. Mm-hmm. And at that age, you know, like, and, and, and actually he's the foil to Atticus, whereas Atticus is ideal, despite all the horror and the things he saw happening to black people around him, he was still more idealistic and optimistic and hopeful for humanity, as opposed to this white kid who has everything going for him, and you're just an asshole and going to be just as racist. Mm-hmm. Just as as racist. I'm like, Mm-hmm. Just following the, following along with the yes, status, status quo. quo. The entrenchment of it all. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and, of it all. Like, y'all just, aren't supposed to be here. Let me make a call. It goes to yeah. show you. This you can't shit, ride, he couldn't rise above himself. No. Right. It, it's ingrained. It is learned. Mm-hmm. It is tradition. Yeah. It is generational. Yeah. It, it's in the bloodline. You know, it's, it's in the DNA. So it, it, was, it had to happen. Sadly, it had right. to happen. Yeah. But what I love was that, once again, the hero of the tale was a sister. <laughs> and the, the moment, this was the moment I said, okay, I love the fact Journey Smollett was chosen for this scene. Yes. Was her and George in that car? Because George's car. And George uh-huh. is telling her, 
look, girl, get up and say, I'm, I'm going to take the wheel. And she told him, my name is not girl. It's Letitia mm-hmm. fucking Lewis. Mm-hmm. And I sat there and I literally started clapping and laughing. Mm-hmm. And I said, that, that's it. Mm-hmm. She, she stamped it. She solidified it. I am a woman. She, right. she is eight. She is. Who say she my is. name. My whole say, name. Yeah, say my whole name. I'm a leader. Mm-hmm. I, I got this. Right. right. Did you, you know, see? And don't forget. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Put that on the license plate. Put that in the mi- middle uh, name. <laughs> middle name. I'm sorry, Gadir. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Um, did you see how that kind of opened his eyes for his own wife? Because yeah. in the yes. You know, she wanted mm-hmm. to put her input and he was kind of like, no, mm-hmm. no, you know. And mm-hmm. then he made that phone call after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, How about you join me the, for the next, next time? time? Yep. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I was yeah. like, yeah, you better ask her to join you because you ain't going to have that morning like you had before you left. <laughs> right. Let's talk about just... love right quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. And, and, also, not to give my age away, but middle-aged, real-life love. Like, not just young kids. Yeah. Young children aren't the only ones having sex. Yeah. Um, you know, m- married couples that, you know, know where it's at and how to do it. <laughs> and be sneaky. Well. And yeah. be sneaky about it. Sneaking with the kids. Because <laughs> when... When um, comic books, you're right. Yeah, and when Hippolyta was like... Doing, guess what? You know these walls are thin. Girl, don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. I was, I was really waiting for Uncle George to say, girl, just let me put the tip in. Just let me get the tip in. That's all I need. I just need a little Not bit. Oh, you can't tell me he didn't. You can't tell me he didn't sound like that. Because he, he was in I was that, just talking about black love. Hey, <laughs> that is a part of black love. Okay. We, you're right. You're okay. Right. We all had that uncle that had that velvet painting of the two uh, naked black people. There we go. <laughs> so we done. We know it. But, <laughs> but it was such a great moment to see her mm. like just say, uh uh-uh, uh, you're going to put some respect on my name. I'm right. saving your ass. I'm not a gal. I'm not a girl. I'm not a little one. I'm not a child. I'm a grown ass woman. Mm-hmm. And this grown ass woman, yeah, I'm fucking up your packet right now. Are we getting away, <laughs> you know. It's it's Harry Tubman. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Get your black ass in the car. Let's go. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. I'm trying to free you from the oppressor. Let's go. You can stay, but I'm going in your car. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. And with that chase, which Favorite was scene. which was so crazy, that was a really good, well filmed car chase. Mm-hmm. It we, was. We had somewhat of a. Um, I want to call it an introduction to a white savior. Yeah. Mm. I'm still, and I'm, that scene, I'm waiting to see how it plays. Yeah. It was silver. It was, it was a silver savior. <laughs> Could it have been the silver surfer? But it was a, but it was a white woman driving now. Mm-hmm. And I sat there once again. I kept saying, I'm not going to compare it to the book, but I had to. And I was like, mm-hmm. ooh, all right, this is just episode one. I know this is going to play out, but su- surprise me even more. Mm-hmm. And we finally get to meet Marvin, who we spoke about earlier, who is the brother of Letitia and mm-hmm. Ruby. And they did some changes in there, but I was fine with the cosmetic changes that they did. Didn't hurt it. We get to see Uncle George. Respect Letitia fucking Lewis, even though he mocked it. <laughs> right. and, and your sister saved us. And I love how Marvin's like, oh, Letty save you? No, no, Letitia fucking Lewis saved us. <laughs> and it was, it was cute, but it was, you could see there was some admiration and respect. Mm-hmm. Because Uncle George is, he is a man of his time, but he's also a very open-minded man but mm-hmm. it takes somebody to kind of you know hit let it hit him in the face like okay you're supposed to be open-minded well damn it be open-minded like he said <laughs> led to the phone call 
you know? it's like our parents our parents yeah. were, you know set in their ways and it's like come on now you don't see what we see what's going on like right you live through it what's going on you know yeah it, it's in your face right. i understand you're old but you're supposed to be the one that is supposed <laughs> to guide me through it i'm not supposed right. to guide you exactly but that is the beauty of children when we grow mm -hmm. we are supposed to take our parents by the hand how they took us as kids mm -hmm. teaching mm -hmm. us the world that they live in lived and live in and then when we become those adults though they're set in their ways it's okay we got to let them know hey the times have changed yes a lot of the bad stuff is still here but mom dad grandma grandpa uncle you know nanny whoever this is what's mm -hmm. going on and what I, I really liked, like you said, was that phone call, that, that openness, that, that moment where he's like, oh, yeah, you know what? I do have a kick-ass wife. Mm -hmm. She does know her stuff. All right. He did, he did do the husbandly thing. He didn't do the full independence thing. How about we take that trip together? <laughs> he put his you ego know. aside. He put his ego aside. But he also still had that. I'm still the man, the husband of this. I, and you the know, protector. the protector. Yeah. You know, part of it, and I understand that part of it because I think he even said that, like, you can't imagine what they would do to a woman, which is what right. I alluded to earlier. Mm -hmm. So some of his actions I understand, but I think the growth came that look, I can love you, and I can only protect you so much. Yeah. But I also know that yeah, you can take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. But that's still, and it's like y'all are saying, the parent to the child. Our parents know they raised us. We can take care of ourselves, but there's always going to be that thing that if I can hold you tighter and closer, and protect you just a little bit longer from this world, mm -hmm. they're going to do it. And that, to me, I understood from that perspective that he was still willing to want to do that, but you can eventually, you let go. You right. have to. Right. You have to. Yep. And it's, a, it's a hard thing, but it has to be done. So I, I understood that because, like you said, I, I think what they did something his knees or something they busted his kneecaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like I said, there is that the, the threat for him. They did this to me, and I'm a man. So what could they do? He was her? fully aware of the gendered violence that could happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. The rape, the this, the, the you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoo! Once again, I say a damn horror sci-fi show <laughs> is deep and <laughs> deep. You right. know, and. As we continue through that journey of Devon County, we learn about Ardham, which is the place they have to go to get good old Mont. Well, we won't see him yet. He wasn't introduced, but we have to go and get um, Tig's dad. All right. So we get to see for the first time the supposed white savior as the uh, band of merry firemen hit the car or <laughs> did they hit the car and do a beautiful 360 and for me i couldn't stop laughing at the guy who was in the who was standing on the bed of the truck right. how his ass just ragged off <laughs> yes <laughs> i bust out laughing you know i was like yep you deserve that lick should have buckled up <laughs> that's 1954 they ain't had seat belts <laughs> you should have strapped down. I mean, <laughs> you in a flatbed. What you thought? No, we always want the racist to die violent, horrible deaths. Well, well, at least I do. Well, you know, I, mean, I, I just sat there and went, karma. Um, <laughs> right. But we see this beautiful silver. I, I, I love that car. That car yeah. was so mm -hmm. gorgeous. It, it had that, that metallic silver. It's supposed to be a Daimler. Um, that's what it was in the book. I'm guessing that's what a Daimler looks like. I'm not a car nut. So, hey, guys, in the comments, if that's a Daimler, please say yes or no. Let me know. And out jumps uh, this young white lady with a huge-ass red church hat <laughs> looking just... I will say very Marilyn Monroe, Jane's, Jane Mansfield. You know, blonde looking, haired and blue eyed. Blonde haired, right. blue eyed. Standard. You know, but can't say Jesus because we all know that ain't true. And she just looks dead at Atticus. 
Atticus is looking back, not knowing mm-hmm. what the hell's going on. And so, with that being said, we move on to Marvin. We had the conversation about Marvin. And there's a moment where Marvin and Letitia get, go at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And man, if that wasn't a good older brother, baby sister, what the hell is you doing with your life? I sent you money. You know, get to the mama funeral. Get to oh right. man, when he when he caught that, you ain't even caught He was mama. big man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we all know black men love their mamas now. Right. We loves our mama. We ain't gonna let mm-hmm. you don't you talk bad about mama. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Letitia really is the black sheep, the baby, the the free spirit. She's not mm-hmm. tethered down by what us older siblings would say, well, you know, I had to take care of mama. I had to take care of daddy. While your ass went gallivant and live, you know, live all the live long day. I had to be an adult while you went to, you know, just went out as this. She was allowed to be irresponsible. Just Irresponsible. Here. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, and. But mm-hmm. Did I catch it right? Where was she helping people that were. She's paying bail for stuff. Yeah. Yes. That the thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I wrote it down. And I'm like, I don't remember it. Yeah. Yes. She was the um. She was the bail movement before the bail movement. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> but at the same time, if you you know listening to Marvin, I don't give a damn about them. You got family, we, right? You know, and it's this old school thing. We your blood. Right. You supposed you to be made an exception for your mom's death. <laughs> exactly. You, you know. Okay. You're, Mama, mama, Good in the ground. Or not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Even though right. mama was harsh and ugly, she's still your mama. You should have been there. And mm-hmm. it, it, for me, it's when he caught that. And what happened to the money I gave you? Mm-hmm. And I said, "Yep, that is an old black man right there." You know right. what? What you did with the money that you were given? It was almost mm-hmm. like he's the father figure and she's the child. Right. I thought you were um, responsible, but I see you are irresponsible. You rather take care of strangers and not your own family. Mm -hmm. And it it was just one of those things that just caught me. I was like, yeah, yeah. Cause I have family like that. And I've heard arguments, you know, you always at so-and-so, but you're never at home. And I'm like, oh, Mm -hmm. it ain't got nothing to do with me. My my macaroni is home. I'm good. I don't don't need y'all help. I'm fine. (laughs) So enough Mm -hmm. of me talking. Come on. Uh, Friends. Mm-hmm. Even even the conversation, you know, sparking up the conversation with Uncle George and Atticus, mm-hmm. that was deep. Yeah. You know, you know, when he was like, you know, you were supposed supposed to protect me from him, but you, oh yes, you know, yes. And, he- and um, what Gadir is speaking about is there is a moment that every black man should have. This it's a it's a come to Jesus meeting. It is a therapy meeting. It is a cleansing of of the souls. Um, Atticus and his dad are not the best of friends. They are not the best of father and son. Mm-hmm. There is a very cruel and hard fault line that's that's between them. Um, they don't really mention it in the scene. They may mention it more on the show, but they have fought. They have come to blows. Um, and his dad is Montrose. Montrose and George are brothers. Um, George is basically telling him Montrose is who he is because of their dad. Mm-hmm. Dad was mm-hmm. a hard ass, old black man, be a man, step up. He never mm-hmm. fought George. Because George was is way older than Montrose, and Montrose was a child, so it was easy to beat up on Montrose. Mm-hmm. And Montrose, growing up to become the man he is, learned that beatings equate to being a man, and he did the same thing with with Atticus, and that's where Atticus was just finally he he just finally had to let it out. You know, because right. George was apologetic. You know, I, I was supposed to save your daddy. I was supposed to mm-hmm. save him. But because he was so much older, he left. Mm-hmm. So Montrose had to take the brunt of it. 
Right. And he said, maybe I should have done better. And Atticus, you know, threw it back at him like, okay, well, you, you failed here, but I was a child and you were there. You could have saved me. You could have protected me from what my, <laughs> what my daddy was doing, right. you know? And, and what I love about that was the, it was like the mini therapy session that mm-hmm. every black person needs. Mm-hmm. We probably need more than a mini session. Oh yeah. But, and I, you know, it's, you know, there's a stigma in the black community about keeping th- family business in the family, mm-hmm. but y'all are letting people destroy someone, their child or whoever mm-hmm with abuse and uh, no one doing anything about it because they know where it comes from, but no one is saving him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, you know, trauma that a lot of black people suffer from just in a generational thing, because it just keeps on recycling itself with no one saving children, you know, no one stopping it in its tracks. So to me, that was like a little mini therapy that they needed to move forward in the story. But, Mm -hmm. um, I think that spoke to the trauma and the therapy that we now need because of that, you know. Yeah, and it, it speaks to the legacy. Mm-hmm. And let's just go to the genesis of it all. Mm-hmm. Slavery, yep. what happened? You were beaten. Right. You were right. And for Black people to pick that up right, and use that against our own children's bodies, against each other, I mean, mm-hmm. that was taught. Mm-hmm. You're disobedient. Let me beat you. Let me whip you. Right. And that, that for itself, all the child. It, that's a thousand mm-hmm. therapy session. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And, right. and usually that is basically what. Okay. Your ancestors were beat. Mm-hmm. Cat of nine tails, and you pick this up and use it against another body. That right. Like, yeah. That that's generational. That's been ingrained. Yeah. Right. That right. which speaks to the horror. You want to talk about horrors? The horror of mm-hmm. slavery. Mm-hmm. The things that we picked up, the colorism, the beatings, the mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's the many tentacles that have reached out across time. In right. Space. right. So basically what you're saying is racism is the Cthulhu. Yeah, America. actually it is. And I'm not excusing you say tentacles. <laughs> I'm like, mm. <laughs> and I'm not excusing us because guess what? There are no saviors. Mm-hmm. We got to save ourselves. Right. Yes. There yeah. are no saviors. Hey, Ms. Jermaine, my neighbor. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> you, and, 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 and we alluded to the, uh, I think you, Odyssey earlier. What is the Odyssey or like any great adventure story? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could say it's, it's, it's a story about going out into the world and this, but mm-hmm. at the heart of that, it's, it's really a story about coming home. Mm-hmm. Right. What is home? Self-actualization. Exactly. So as mm-hmm. much as you go out and have to fight the great adventures in the Cthulhu, whoever it may be, mm-hmm. it's ultimately a story about you're expelled. Let's just use the, 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 mm-hmm. the female form, the woman. You're expelled forth from the woman out into this world and you have your obstacles and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. But the journey is, where did I come from? The place right. before this place where I am self, as you said, self-actualized. Mm-hmm. Who mm-hmm. am I? Right. Mm-hmm. That's the journey. It's always a journey about coming home and what is home, right. and things of that nature. But yeah, it is the Cthulhu because, mm-hmm. and it's disgusting. I don't know. I, like I said, I can't find a strong enough word for what that <coughs> in this country mm-hmm. has done. Yeah. And look, it has harmed us. And I'm going to say this with my whole chest. It has destroyed white people. It has yeah. destroyed them. Mm-hmm. There is no humanity there. Right. One, give me your redemption. I'm like, Aunt, fuck your apology. Fuck it all. What are you doing hard down to show me? This was done to you and not by your great, 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 great. No, like I said, this is not even 100 years ago. The, right. Jim Crow and all that, that's your granddaddies and your grand, great granddads. That's your grandmothers. Mm-hmm. who right. were just as instrumental in holding up that system and your great grandmother. Mm-hmm. What are mm-hmm. you doing to right those wrongs? Right. And what are you, you teaching you your children? Wrongs, exactly. Until mm-hmm. you right those wrongs, it'll, nothing will ever be right. 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 You have harmed us and still we thrive. Mm-hmm. You destroyed yourselves. Ultimately, right. you destroyed yourselves and mm-hmm. your children if you keep perpetrating that bullshit. 
Because, right. baby, the world is black and brown as it is, and America is on its way quicker than you realize. Right. And unless a lot of us just are self-hating enough to just go along with it, yeah, I'm preaching right now, I'm going to go ahead on. <laughs> Race is going to be vastly no. different for no. them. Your kids will not thrive if you no. teach them this bullshit. Because in seats of power, there will be black and brown people. Right. And, and not all of us need to be validated externally by white people. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean we hate white people. That doesn't mean when we're right. in the power that we're not going to take care of your children, that we don't want the best for your children as we, as we want for our children. But right. herein lies the problem. You only want the best for your goddamn children in real right. life. Right. I'm done. I'm done. Welcome I'm to Devon <laughs> County, ladies and gentlemen. You're mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I'm not sorry. Show. No, no there's no apology needed. It's like I say, say what you mm -hmm. mean, mean what you say. Right. But with saying what you said, we are going to go, I'm going to go back to Eustace. We got to. I know we talked about it earlier. That's a great segue into the racist son of a bitch. So exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we have to talk about Eustace Hunt. You know, Marvin tells him, good old Eustace Hunt, which once again, whoo. I was not expecting that at all. And this is where the Lovecraftian madness kicks in the <laughs> drive because after we see the fireman do a 360 pirouette to the asphalt. Roadkill. Roadkill. We, everybody noticed that the truck did not hit the car. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we see some science fiction yeah. And a little bit of the supernatural. Right. Boy, if it's one thing about black folks, we love us some supernatural. Magic. <laughs> and, and that is the thing, because we're going to talk about that hopefully by episode two and three. I, I, I think we're going to really sit down and talk about the magical Negro. But mm -hmm. when we see that they're back on the road and they're going to Devon County. They're going to Artem. They're going to uh, get Montrose. Still don't know what the hell happened to poor Montrose. And I say poor, but, you know, I say it because I kind of know, but I got a feeling they're going to flip the script on me again. Mm -hmm. We meet good old Eustace Hunt. And we see, like I said, this was not the emasculation of a man. This was the dehumanization of a man. Mm -hmm. Right. And we learn about sundown towns because like he told them, oh, you're not supposed to be around here. You best be glad. And, and that was the part that caught me was when he told Atticus, oh, well, be glad the sun is up. Because if it wasn't, you know, I could do whatever I want with you. And he said it was in his duty. duty. Yeah. Yes. It was a duty. Distinction within his duty. Okay. Within his duty. Which which comes which I have to violence. is that in the oath? Cause I'll be damned. Mm. <laughs> like, you know what <laughs> I know what it to was. To serve, protect, and kill black people. Well, I will use the great Let's poet. It. Oh no, <laughs> I will use the great poet laureate Ice Cube's words <laughs> to serve, protect, and break a nigga's neck. And that's what it was. Like he, he basically told him straight up, I am the protector and enforcer of a law that it was never made for you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Gadir, you had something to say? Yes. So when mentioning that, um, I'm not sure if you ever heard of the, the term denizen before. Mm -hmm. It's like citizen, but it's denizen. Uh -huh. So uh, the, the definition here uh, says like a foreigner allows certain rights in an adopted country or an inhabitant mm -hmm. of occupant of a particular place. So when you, Ashley, when you were just saying, you know, what is it to serve, protect and, and what, you know, whatnot, it's to protect their duty is to serve and protect the law, not the people. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's how it is, you know, that, that's, that's a definition. We think we're citizens, but we're not, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so the, the term is denizen, if I'm, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, you're right, it's denizen, okay. and you're right. In the law, gotcha. I, the state, that's what they're voting for, the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Fortunately, but that's, yeah. they get paid mm -hmm. more to protect the law. 
Right. They're not going to airbrush that on their cars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My is to, I'm here to protect the word, not you. Right. Bubba. <laughs> right. I wish they would add that yes. on their cars. So now we know where we stand. Exactly. Right? And that's and probably the whole problem as is. And I actually forgot when that was actually changed to reflect what she said. I can't remember right now if that yeah. actually there was a time to protect and to serve, but I don't even think they put in to serve on there. And I forgot, but mm-hmm. it, it has changed. I'm yeah, because it yeah. used to be to protect and serve back. from what I know, to protect that. and serve. Okay. I think that was actually a court case that went, I think I got to go back and, but I remember it. Okay. She's absolutely right. Well, mm-hmm. we all wow. know nowadays, like I said earlier. Right. Well, they're I'll, showing us better than they could tell us. I could tell you that. That is true. <laughs> and, and they are I, showing us that definition. I will but say you know, it again. Have they ever stopped showing us? Nope. Thanks. But Thanks. I, like I said earlier, Eustace is the cop that killed George Floyd. The yeah. cop that shot and killed Breonna Taylor. Mm-hmm. The cop that killed Sandra Bland are cops with their neglect. Yeah. Boyd. Yeah, we Boyd. Um, mm-hmm. Sean Bell. Oscar Eric Grant. Garner. Eric Gardner. Yeah. Alton Sterling, and no, mm-hmm. I'm not related to the brother, but we do carry the last same name. Um, and the ones that have not gotten the footage are the cousins. Thank you. Thank you. So that is Eustace Hunt. And yes, art imitates life, but it, it, that's just the fact. It's truth. But mm-hmm. the moment he told them, you know, and, and that's, that's the part that really that 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 was just a constant punch you know mm-hmm. when he says y'all need to get out of here because sundown is around nine oh nine uh 709 excuse me and what i love atticus tried to be smart atticus tried to be a little sassy mm-hmm. with him and not mm-hmm. say sassy but he was being a man right. i'm gonna talk to you like a man mm-hmm. equal but atticus knew he wasn't equal but I'm going to still talk to you like a grown ass man. Right. And well, Eustace had to use those power words and we all know the mega power word N I double G E R mm-hmm. not a, a, not a term of endearment, not a, yo, you my nickel. Mm-hmm. No, you are a nigger and you're going to have to live with that. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. But when mm-hmm. Atticus asked him, you know, oh, well, we're going to leave. Well, mm-hmm. not going that way. Mm-hmm. Not going north because you're still in my county. Mm-hmm. Don't want you here. Right. Well, can we you turn? And I just love how you, and I love the, I, the guy who played Eustace. You know what? Kudos to you, dude. I know you probably threw up after you did your scene. <laughs> You might have donated to Black Lives Matter. I don't know, but you really played the scene. You really played that character yeah. well. You did. And it was the moment of, you know what? You're smart. And I'm glad you asked that question when Atticus asked about the U-turn. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, normally that is a violation. But if you ask me now, and I say, oh, shit, here we go. It's the five he, heartbeats. He's got, you're going he to have to sing for freedom. The, right. I got he was playing with him the entire time. It was yeah. a game. It, it was like a, um, all of that. Yep. It was like a hunter with its prey. It, it was like, a, excuse me, a predator Hence with its prey. Hence the mm-hmm. name. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Eustace Hunt, you are right. And yeah. like I said, oh, yeah. Lord, he got to sing like Dresser and the rest of the five heartbeats for oh, his freedom. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it to him. But it was, I think Gadir was the one who said it. Him doing it in front of Letty. And it was the shot that they had of Letty in the car. Mm-hmm. Listening and hearing to the whole thing. And I'm like, come on, Letitia fucking Lewis. Come on, girl. Just mm-hmm. hit him with the door and y'all run. But mm-hmm. sadly, it never happened. That is a reality. And he had to no longer be Atticus Black, he had to become a nigga. Mm-hmm. And for survival. For survival. And strangely enough, in that scene, and maybe I read too much into it, but when I looked at Letitia mm-hmm. and how she looked at Atticus and that look was exchanged, it looked to me that 
she was letting him know that I'm still affording you the humanity, even though I know you have to do what you have to do to save all of us. That, to me, is how I interpreted her look. Oh, you mean like what that, every black woman does to, for a black man? Yeah, that she looked at him like, okay. There was no pity. No. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. and look, I know what you're doing, and exactly. I still recognize that you are one human, and that mm -hmm. two, you are a man, mm -hmm. and I get this. So that yeah. motherfucker right there, yeah, he's not taking anything, and I think she afforded him that grace. At least maybe I read yeah. too much, but that's nope. how it looked in her wow. eyes when I mm -hmm. saw her look at him. Right. And, and listen, and let's not move, let's not run away from the fact because let's let's just say we know they don't like us. Some of them, plenty of them, still don't like us. No matter black and brown people, because of just just like you said, my skin ain't my sin. But for plenty of them, it is. But let's not erase the fact that he made that man say smart, and I'm gonna yes. say the word in front of nigger. Yeah, you have to put we the all know it's bad enough that you're a nigger. Mm -hmm. well, I'll be damned if you're gonna be a smart nigger because I'm gonna show you right what we do to smart niggers just like we do to regular niggers in our eyes. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. made him say smart nigger. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, it's like, mm -hmm. um, you, you know what? I'd have been dead. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. If I'd been doing that, I, I just would have had to have my look. I'm I don't think any of us would have survived. But I'm gonna be <laughs> We'd have all been gone. I think we'd have been gone in a minute because look, yeah. or like Orcelia, <laughs> not uh, so also feel in the color purple. Right. Been oh yeah. Hell no. What did you say? <laughs> yeah, Eustace would have got jacked. His jaw would have been broken. Look, she went through what she went through. Random over she still and knocked the fuck out of that woman. She still, I don't care how, so, how Sophia ended up. She could still say, I knocked the fuck out of that bitch. Yeah, I knocked her husband. The out. mayor. The he man. was the mayor. <laughs> the mayor. Yes, the mayor. She <laughs> laid the mayor on his ass. <laughs> Black women, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Then, now, digress. always. I'm sorry for digressing. Okay, go back. No, but, no, we no, gotta it, have a color purple break. Oh, anyway, it, it'll I happen. Mean, it'll happen. The greatest right. black movie ever known to man. But <laughs> you know, but but looking at Leti like looking at Letty, I saw fire. I saw anger. But I also mm. saw I, I saw comfort. I saw <laughs> yeah. When this yeah. is over, I'm gonna always be there. Mm -hmm. I'm here. You mm -hmm. come to me for mm -hmm. when, 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 you know, when the, when the wolves are out there, solace mm -hmm. is in me, you know, and I, and I thought that was a beautiful, it was a heartbreaking, but it was a beautiful moment. Yeah. I don't remember if they showed jo Uncle George, because I really wish he would have had his hand on that piece. <laughs> he would have had mm -hmm. his hand on that gun. Mm -hmm. But if you, you, you know, when George said, Let, let's just get the hell out of here. But sadly, mm -hmm. they couldn't leave. Well, they left. And lo and behold, a race against time. It was mm -hmm. it was the Woody versus the Sun versus Eustace. Mm -hmm. And that I thought the intensity of the first car chase was really intense. Mm -hmm. Ooh -hoo -hoo. And this was 25 miles an hour. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. 25 miles an hour. You it was so lapped. suspenseful. Yeah, you right. get slapped by a woman in an old woman in a walker, you know, right. or in a hover round. But mm -hmm. the 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 intensity, the 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 fear. I, I love how they just kept yelling. What time is it? Yes. Going from the stress, the stress of it. You know, mm -hmm. and they say, "Well, go faster." If I go faster, he gonna pull me over anyway. Right. You know, you can't win for losing. Can't yeah. win for losing. And, <laughs> and even in the midst of that, he hit the car too. Yeah, to make him speed up. To make you know, because right. you know he, he wasn't going twenty five. He was going at least thirty. And he mm -hmm. just kept bumping them like, yeah, I dare you. I dare you to speed up. Do it. Do it. And they didn't. And I'm cheering. I'm like, yeah. come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. You can do it. They got Get us. You. They got us with that shit. The whole time, Letitia. Over the hill. Over the hill. Letitia F. and Lewis Tracks. was yelling in the back of my head. Let's get the fuck out of here. Come <laughs> on, y'all. Get the fuck out of Devon. Get just get. And when they showed the sign, I'm like, ooh, once again safe haven but it was all a lie because mm -hmm. eustace's monkeys mm -hmm. right there waiting with the roadblock which goes back to what ashley said earlier a false sense of comfort there is no yep. comfort there is no safety so even <laughs> then you were lulled into thinking there's no, no winning yeah there's exactly no winning. <laughs> lulled and think one more okay he escaped it 
Yeah. There is no escape. It's inescapable. Yeah. It's a series yeah. of moments that we have to navigate, which yep. goes back to Ashley's point. And then mm. we have the moment <laughs> with, the, with the conversation of, which happened before even Eustace. What is a sugar off? What, and, you know, and Letitia's like, what, what you talking about? What is a sugar off? And mm -hmm. he explains, oh, it's a blob with hundreds of eyes and it eats things, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And I said to myself, they're not going there. They just can't. <laughs> All right. You know, this is from the book. Fun times. All right. <laughs> but we have another intense moment. And, and this is what I love about this first episode. Once it grabs you and those moments hit, it was almost nonstop. Even in the moment where they were at Marvin's, Mm -hmm. the false sense of security mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kicks in and then it's like nope now we're gonna have us a killing executioner style and i'm like okay i read this in the book i know what's coming i know what's coming and it once again nisha green i hope you hear this i hope you see this good lady you have flipped the script on me again and lo and behold, right before they pop them, somebody got their arm ripped off. <laughs> and they it got was, the right one. They got the right, there you go. The right one. The right got one. It. The right. <laughs> and what's crazy to me is you're being rescued from monsters with monsters. Like the monsters. Hey, hey, hey. The church say amen. <laughs> from the races yes. like you were i'm thankful for a monster with all these eyes and you know i don't do um horror yeah yeah i told you to watch the show in the daytime with the lights on I, and I did. Sir, <laughs> about the long arm of the law here that ah. mm. <laughs> that's good. Not too long is, anymore <laughs> with all and i say this with all those eyes they saw the truth yes. they knew who to attack all they scene. knew who to go uh -huh. for. All yeah, scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you they know, did. that sugar off was like, you, you picked the right one today. Yes. I got time All for it. I got to, we, my whole crew got time for you. <laughs> and when they started hauling ass, and, 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 it, and you know what it reminded me of? <laughs> the scene when they got to the cabin, the old wooden house. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It kind of reminded me of Michael Jackson's <laughs> thriller or any <laughs> typical yeah, horror really film. Any yes. typical horror film where we're trapped <laughs> and the trapped monsters are all around and, and we don't know what to do. <laughs> but what, what I love so much was that apparently was you the, point a gun at the black people, but you point exactly. You, your hatred is so strong mm -hmm. that these multi eyed vampiritic monsters are no threat to you. You just lost your goddamn arm. Not, not, not just your arm. You lost the fucking shoulder. Right. A chunk. Uh, who, uh, like, that, like when they hang that meat. Yeah, it, it, and it was just chilling on the ground, holding the flashlight. You got chunks missing. And for me, I said George, that, yeah, and Uncle he, George was like, God, no, nah, I don't it. remember. Didn't he when 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 Eustace? Didn't he shoot a hole in the cabin door? Because I'm like, don't let that motherfucker in. But didn't he shoot yeah. a hole? Yeah, they, they shot yeah, a yeah. hole, and that's when you see George. Because you remember, they left George. Yeah, they put yeah. the black folks in the horror film. Sorry, well, baby, what? if you can't what? run, we can't blame black people for that because we all no. have a rule. <laughs> yes. You see one of us run, your best night start running. So and if you what? didn't, that's your ass. Yes, <laughs> yes. you know, I felt like um, you remember on Martin uh, Martin's comedy special? I don't know if it was Run Tell. You so crazy when he yeah. said, "Look, if, if if they if they start going, I'm leaving her," mm, and right. I'd be more concerned, like, "Oh, damn, I, I dropped okay. my head." I hope she's somebody okay. Now somebody has to be the historian. It's, <laughs> hey, a hero dies one death, a coward dies a thousand, but that coward Ooh, lives to tell God. the story how that brave motherfucker died. So, <laughs> so historians are necessary. Shout out to DL Hughley on that one. Somebody got to survive. Exactly. Somebody got to tell the tale, and hopefully the right <laughs> way. But I was like, y'all done left Uncle George. Y'all know he got the bad knees, and y'all done left that man. <laughs> But Uncle George, Uncle George was all right. But Uncle George was but resilient. Me, resilient is when they shot the hole and you see George coming. Open up, <laughs> open up. <laughs> George was. Just, I was like, now nah, that is an old black man right there. That, you, you, everything, 
everything from their reactions to even how they form their um their plan was so realistic yes because what do you do when you're back you got to form a plan and not just panic and freak out like they were so smart about those decisions Mm -hmm. and i was just like yes black people surviving horror like we have been doing forever except in hollywood yeah apparently we can't survive a horror story in Girl. movies, but I was like, yes, y'all will survive because even if the plan is simple as saying, shoot that motherfucker. Shoot the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they stopped and thought. Yes. You know? and, Let's and, stop and, and think. What is happening? Eustace and his deputy are like, no, don't give them that. I, I, I want to keep keep your gun trained on them. Once again, Eustace, you lost a whole damn arm, including the shoulder, mind you. And, and that was the point where here comes the horror, the true, another horror moment. Mm-hmm. Eustace should have been dead. Eustace, mm-hmm. I know he had blood loss big time. Mm-hmm. And the folks who understand horror. horror and supernatural and sci-fi, the black. Uncle George, what happens when a person is bit by a vampire? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Let, let's also not forget they sent Letty out to the car. Yeah. <laughs> and she's the track star. Track star. Right. <laughs> so once again, black woman saving the day. Save the day. <laughs> Where's ass out there, girl. And lo and behold, they figure it out. The sugar mm-hmm. the sugars are vampiretic. They mm-hmm. are Light sensitive. Light sensitive. They weren't and sparkling. They weren't sparkling, but oh they were virus. <laughs> Let me a- tell you, when he I'm sorry, when he turned into a vampire, I was like, how are you uglier than the monster? It's like <laughs> <laughs> you know and what? You, I love the metaphor. You became what you, you are. Literally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, most feet, what you're afraid of, right? You're a virus. You're a sick. No, wait, you know what, Ann? I have to before we get to let it running. But all their lives. All of them. This is the thing. And I have to say something. I won't name names. But you know what? As a child, you know, you're idealistic. Like, oh, we're going to get along. And then, you know, coming into my womanhood, my blackness, everything else. Oh, this is how the world works against me in a lot of ways. And how I Mm -hmm. navigate it. I had an old black man tell me once. And this is pertinent to that scene. He said, baby, you know, because I'm going to share a truth here. I never could understand where some older black people, I'm talking about their ages, of, oh, we should have stayed segregated. I'm like, no, what? No, that's not the point. We all got to get along and get together. I hate to say this, but I could understand in some ways what they meant because they'd seen it. And he told mm-hmm. me something that stayed with me. He said, baby, you're going to get old enough. And one day you're going to learn. And he said, I'm not saying all of them, but when it comes down to choosing to do right, or choosing whiteness, mm-hmm. plenty of white folks are gonna choose whiteness. Now let's go back to that scene in the cabin, like we're all talking about. There were monsters for Christ's sakes, monsters. Who didn't and care you were color. Scared. Everybody was me. <laughs> and you still chose, and this goes back to the irrationality of evil. Mm-hmm. I'm more threatened by this black man, these two mm-hmm. black, men in, black men in here, as opposed to a motherfucking monster, otherworldly, and everything else. But just so instead of choosing to do the right thing Mm -hmm. and siding with these men so y'all could fight a common enemy and even the deputy when they're saying shoot that motherfucker he could not bring himself to kill another white man who was literally turning into a motherfucking monster before his eyes he still chose whiteness (laughs) which thankfully led to both their death but hey that's what and and i understand that as an older Mm -hmm. adult yeah and i shouldn't have to say but for the sake of audience, the people are gonna watch this. Not all white people. If it don't apply, let it fly. But I'll never forget that old black man telling me that mm-hmm. that too many of them will choose whiteness over right over choosing doing the right thing. And that's what that whole scene in the cabin reminded yeah. me of. I heard that man's voice mm-hmm. in my head. I'm like, this is an example of that. And to quote and Uncle George, to do the right thing. It ain't. But they're still choosing mm-hmm. the falseness of whiteness and choosing death. Yeah, Death. I would rather die than save your black ass. And that's and that's the false falseness 
of, of, of white hoodedness. And whatever Uncle, you want to Uncle, call George, <laughs> Uncle George get, said it best. You dehumanized my nephew. Well, you ain't human no more. You a motherfucker. Shoot that motherfucker. And I love right. and I loved his his calmness at first. Uh yeah, yeah. You, you, <laughs> yeah. you need to shoot him. Well, I ain't gonna shoot. Shoot that motherfucker right he now. Right. He wouldn't <laughs> shoot another white man, baby. He wouldn't do right. it. White. What more you need to yeah. <laughs> you know, and right. him becoming a Shagoth was one karma to his true self. You you've become what you are, you know. Right. Took that old adage from uh Earth Wind and Fire. Ain't it funny how the way you feel shows on your face and law <laughs> George Orwell said that what first <laughs> to forty you wear your face, but forty on beyond, your face mm-hmm. your face wears you. you so if you yeah. live, no good son of a bitch, uh baby it's showing. And then we mm-hmm. cut to the track star herself. Mm-hmm. Good old Letty running like like what they say, like uh Shit through a goose, <laughs> lightning struck her in the ass. Letty was gone. She's gone. Smoking. <laughs> okay. I, I wanted to say something with that. You know that that moment between Atticus and Letty, right before she was stepping out to run. You know, and and she's like, I'm scared. Yes. And he's like, mm-hmm. you know, fear is not gonna save us right now. You are. Yeah. And, right. And that spoke volumes. Right. That's just like in like us right now, the, you know, what we see in the physical world is mm-hmm. not what's going on. It, it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual war mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Right. And 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 fear is what's going to kill us if we don't yeah. look right. each other in each other's eyes and say, yes, we got this. Right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that was a big that was a big thing for me. That yeah. scene right yeah. there. And to piggyback off of that too, a black man encouraging a black woman yeah. mm-hmm. to save us, you know, yeah. like not saying just do this. Just, he was saying you are going to do this. Exactly. You will do this. You right. will he save didn't us demand like you it. did before. Yeah, right. he didn't command it. He wasn't like I'm. I'm. Yeah, just no. go. He, exactly. he looked at her. At first, he wanted to go. Yeah. The, 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 right. the, the, the police officer said, "No, she's going to go." Another example of state-sanctioned violence against black women. Because mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. and because right. Atticus is like, no, he said, I'm going. Yeah. And the white cop, no, she's going to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know what, Eustace? Good, good idea. Even in your right. hatred. Your only good idea. Kudos. Yeah. yeah kudos, you bastard. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> man, Letty was hauling ass. The ass is yeah. telling her for Oh, yeah. She had that track run. Oh, yeah. Oh. The fingers straight. She, you know it's over. Usain Bolt couldn't run fingers. faster than that. She she understood it. You know, it, it was like Harriet, Harriet, everybody had lightning coming through them and, sh- and just struck the hell out of the lady. Right. Girl, Her whole get, ancestry and lineage oh, came to get to that car. Exactly. It was like everybody that was on her list from Ancestry.com came and just <laughs> oh, her ass. All of them. Push her. Oh, yeah. First of time, they, was oh, with, yeah. they were with her. From the beginning to now, get your right. ass to that them. car. And, <laughs> and she made it. And, and she made it. And once mm-hmm. again, false sense of security. Mm-hmm. She, gets to the, she gets to the goalpost. And what happens? It gets moved on her because, hey, I'm a Chagall, baby, blah, blah, blah. But no, you ain't fucking mm-hmm. with Letitia fucking Lewis. Mm-hmm. You hit that <laughs> light and blinded the hell out of it. But as I, I have to say, the Shagoth was very smart because he was like, all right, bitch, you got me. I'm on your ass. Mm-hmm. And it was more intensity. Mm-hmm. Are they going to make it? Are they going to make it? Is Misha Green going to pull a, a Game of Thrones and take out a major character? What, what, come, mm-hmm. like, what you going to do? And as we see, good old Eustace turn into one, which was, that was so nasty and beautiful at the same time. Mm-hmm. I was just like, Oh, 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 Lord, you need mm. some Ambi. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, because like when his arm popped where, where mm. it was missing and it just popped out of the uh, out of that meat, I was just like, oh, Lord, this is where you yeah. eat Cat Williams. This is where <laughs> Cat Williams would have changed the whole dynamic of this. <laughs> oh, my God, what's going on with you? You need Jesus. 
somebody needs to call the of the <laughs> Lord for you. <laughs> Nigga, I am hurting. <laughs> Y'all see this rap ball done turn into something. But right. it would have been dope as hell. It would have it would have killed the moment because I'd have laughed through the whole thing. But I love right. that transformation. It was mm-hmm. so cool and gruesome. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and it, it that never happened in the book. So I was like, oh, good job, Misha. And like like y'all said, he became he became exactly what he was supposed to be. A monster. Mm-hmm. He, monster. It's, it's true. What he already he, was. What he already was. And then mm-hmm. when we thought all was Hope was all gone, and yeah, this is a Game of Thrones. I think they go kill everybody. This mm-hmm. weird whistle blows mm-hmm. out into the distance, and all the little shagots. Oh yeah, hurried away. Wait, wait, wait! I'm sorry. That part where they they were getting Uncle George to the <laughs> car, and they're like. She's like, put him in the light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was I'm like, he just slumped him down. <laughs> but he was alive. He was alive. And once they again. Him the right. I said, like, why do you see the hand on that man? Like <laughs> but once again, <laughs> who's the hero of the tale in this episode? Leticia Lee. Leticia. Leticia well, fucking Lewis. Lewis. Right. Yes. I don't know and why I thought it, she said Leticia motherfucking Lewis. Do I think no, I like no. motherfucker or something? She didn't need she mother didn't. because fucking was strong enough. I know. I don't know why she said it. <laughs> and it was mm-hmm. just so crazy because <laughs> now we have a moment. Now we got a what in the hell is going on? Right. Who blew that whistle? Or who blew whatever the hell it was? Like, what because, do they want? Yeah, because no. the shagots were just like, oh, shit. You, you know what they remind me of? Mm-hmm. The street light came on, and <laughs> the mama was calling. Get your right, ass right. in this house. Because they, right. they were attentive. Yeah, yeah, he called it, them children yeah. of the night. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that, that was another cool part, you know, because you, you, you see they're, they're quoting these great, horror stories these great works mm-hmm. of art in my opinion mm-hmm. that were written mm-hmm. by bastard ass men bram mm-hmm. bam bram stroker is mm-hmm. was not a nice man he, mm-hmm. he was he was a racist he was a nationalist and if y'all don't believe me y'all go find that biography about him no, i know he hated mm-hmm. a lot of folks he, he was a piece of shit but he wrote an amazing story you know and is Stephen king like the only exception uh Stephen King not is a, the not only a conversation, not a conversation. I, I think Matt Ruff is in that as well. Um because he wrote Lovecast Lovecraft uh mm-hmm. country, but Stephen oh, King true. Stephen King's claim to um like friendliness is that he does create the uh the magical Negro. He loves magical black people. Go that's read true. the stand, read the shining, you know, yeah. Yeah. Re- go uh watch or uh, read Doctor Sleep. He loves yeah. magical black mm-hmm. people. Yeah, I yeah. Guess that's, that's in Maine because yeah, 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 because he, you know, now I did ask a question though, but I'm just okay. No, I mean that's another. That's another right. I've I've never. I'm not gonna <laughs> throw. I'm not gonna throw him in the waste basket because of right. it. You know, I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, he mm-hmm. likes super black people. Uh, look at Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Black Panther, all the black characters that they came up with. You know, superheroes, mm-hmm. but right. still magical super black people but you know i digressed on that i digress i but, i caused that i'm sorry no more no no uh-uh. this is why we <laughs> having a talk back this is recapping yeah. we are conversating this is friend mm-hmm. talk but the last scene and this is the last scene of that episode they ain't got no car <laughs> and they full, are of walking, full of blood and they are walking mm-hmm. victorious yet defeated Right. And they make it to this massive mansion that, my goodness, beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then it ends. Where do we go from here? I have a feeling I know because I read mm-hmm. the book. <laughs> but as I've said throughout this whole damn thing, Misha Green has been playing me for a fool and I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, just, just, I'm gonna just do this like I do with every show. Shut my ass up. And what? Glue my face to it. 
And when it's over, oh, Lord, I did not see that. All right. Hey, you know. So I, I, I want to get to y'all's feelings. I, and I know y'all have already given me how y'all feel. But as of right now with episode one, were you satisfied? Did you feel like they left something out? Or did they give you everything you were expecting? Um, how did you feel about the episode as a whole? And, and, and it might be reiterating what we've talked about for almost two hours now. Mm-hmm. You know, excuse me, y'all. He's crying. But guess what? The show goes on. Um, so I want to start with Gadir. Yes. How did you feel about the first episode? And what, are, what do you want to see or what? How can I put it? What are you most excited to see? Who's your favorite character so far? And what do you want to see in the future episodes? Because it's 10 episodes. Okay. Where do you think it's going to go? What do you want to see? Who's your favorite character? Okay. So I just have to uh, do a disclaimer. I have not read the novel just yet. But, it's I'm, okay. going, but I'm going to because it's ama- is that amazing. Uh, but I was satisfied with the episode. Um, my favorite character, you see, because it's 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 kind of hard. So I, I like I like Letty a lot. I like her boldness and not being you know afraid, except for that one scene. Um, but oh, it's so hard to choose. Um, I ju- I just like the journey Atticus is taking. You know, it's it's like his story at the end of it, you know, um, in this episode anyways. But um, what, what was the other thing you asked me? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you fa- did you do your favorite character? Well, it's, it's hard. To, I was saying it was hard to choose because I like all of them in their own way, you know. Um, but I, I did draw to Letty a lot because um, I guess as, as me being a single mother, um, of two, I kind of feel that like, you know, you tell me I can't do something. I dare you, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to see, you know, what happens with their bond, Uncle George and uh, Letty and, and Atticus, like what, what's going to happen? Are they going to stay, you know, a, a team or are they going to go their separate ways? Or are they going to have more people with them fighting, you know, f- for for them, you know? Um, but as of right now, I'm really satisfied. Like you said, you know, big, big shout out to Ms. Nisha Green. She did an amazing job. And um, I'm looking forward to watching all of the episodes. Melissa? Um. Okay, let's see. You gave me the book as a gift. Yeah, I did. You ain't read it. I know. No, I wanted to, and then you forced me. Like, you got to watch it. Watch the first episode. But I am going to go back and read the book. I plan on binge reading it next weekend. Mm -hmm. But as far as the show itself, I'm still curious about the white savior, quote unquote, but I know they fit into a bigger thing, especially if we're going to talk about Atticus's lineage. And and I'm wondering if this is a... It's not even... I'm not going to say an origin story, but a Genesis mm. story and how that fits in the greater scheme of things. Because just looking at the preview for next uh, week, I think that obviously all these people have lived multiple lives. At least that's how it's seen. Mm-hmm. So is this a multiverse thing going on or, you know, and then I think someone alluded to, we will be the last people standing so it's it's interesting. I, I, my interest is peaked and see what are you doing with this? Mm-hmm. You know, is, is, is this a, a progenitor story, so to speak? The thing that gave birth to everything, you know, and and this also deals with the race. So if he is denied, which let's face it, we've been denied our birthright. We don't even know our names. Mm-hmm. Gotta be real. Okay. So looking at it in the universal lens or from a through a universal lens you deny this what so who are we where do we fit in this because Atticus Letty all of them Uncle George collectively is the embodiment of Mm. of the black race I look at them as even though they're three separate characters I see them as a collective Mm -hmm. to me one character 
propelling yeah. forward. So their journey is all our journey. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing with that? What, what, what questions are you raising? What answers are you willing to give us, Misha? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm willing to go along for the journey with her. And I, I hope I'm not disappointed. Uh, the gate, damn good job. But I want to see the questions she's raising and what those answers, if she's willing to give them to us. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. Right. Ashley? Yeah. Well, y'all, I came into this completely blind. I've heard of Lovecraft just, you know, offhanded. So I didn't know about a book, didn't know about anything. I just love Black people with being made, Black shows being made by Black people, for you know, and not just for Black people, but a sci-fi horror Black show, I'm watching it. So mm -hmm. coming into this completely blind, I'm just awestruck by the different, I want to say genres, but just the different things it's hitting, not just for racial things, but also sci-fi, also horror, mm -hmm. which outside of horror, I'm all into. So, you know, looking, just looking at beautiful Black people on screen, and also not afraid to deal with the issues that studios are afraid of or studios are tiptoeing around where this is upfront in your face, but also, you know, weaving a web of not just racism, but, you know, lineage, like you said, and heritage and all of this stuff. So I'm just, I'm just here for, for I'm rooting for everybody black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So that's why I'm here. I'll awesome. right. okay. continue to watch it just out of uh, curiosity, support, but also a stellar, um, this pilot, if you will, I wouldn't even call it a pilot, but just this first show is leaving the door open for so many different things. I'm, I don't know where it's going, but exactly. I'm, I'm going for the ride, you know, right. so I'm, I'm with it. Awesome. Well, for I me. I wanted to know one wait, last wait. thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Anthony. Uh, something Melissa uh, brought up, you know, wanting um, if uh, Misha is going to bring up answers for the Black people. I also want to see if it brings up for the white allies to, you know, answers for them to be like, okay, so I know what my ancestors did was wrong. What do I you know, are there answers to show them the way uh, as far as like, you know, being an ally mm -hmm. and, and fixing the wrongs? Yeah. Okay. okay. That would be interesting. Very. Well, for me. You know what? Oh, I actually, that, I'm sorry. Because is absolutely right. Because yeah, racism, first of all, white people created, that's their problem. They, they're the fixers. They have to fix it. They have to. Yeah. Our issue to fix is the impacts Right. Mm -hmm. of that racism on us as a community. Mm -hmm. That's my whole concern. Right. right, right. And if white people can truly be allies, I, I, I give you that. I absolutely co-sign with that. Mm -hmm. I'm only worried about my community. Right. Fixing, re well, let me say this, recovering. Recovering. If that is the, even we need possible. The therapy. Mm -hmm. Because recovery is not possible right. to me if the conditions are still the same. It's just right. like a, any kind of addiction. If the conditions right. are the same, ain't nothing changing. Right, right, exactly. It goes back to right. see, which you know what, Gadir, you just brought me full circle to what I was saying. <laughs> right. the connectedness of all of this. Mm -hmm. White people have to fix it because it's theirs. They did it. We have to recover, heal, heal, heal. exactly. Do destroy the impact it has had. Right. Mm -hmm. Not racism. I'm not saying it's mm -hmm. not our job to destroy racism. It's our right. job to destroy its legacy and its right, impact right. that it's having on us. Exactly. Right. So right. this, you're right. So I, 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 I'm, thank you for raising that point because I completely mm -hmm. get that. And, and you know what? I hate to say we're, we're tied together in this. So that's why I said it is, I want to see it, it, is this a, it's not an origin, so it, the genesis. Right. right. We need right. the beginning. Right. An origin story can happen at any point in time. No, you bring me back to the genesis of it all. Thank you. So mm -hmm. deep. You, <laughs> deep. <laughs> you knew you were getting with me. <laughs> and look, so deep. To your point, look, I don't like, believe this or not, y'all going to laugh. Anthony knows this. I can't stand violence. I abhor violence. I understand it's necessary, and uh -huh. I have a stomach. And like seeing that scene when 
he rightfully mm. got his arm too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I swear my stomach went, but I, I forced myself to watch it because I got such, I had a bloodlust that I do not apologize for. Hmm. Well, no. on that note, um, <laughs> <You know what? laughs> Daughter, <Hippolyta>. <laughs> okay, well, um, see, for me, I'm, I'm not going to say what I expect because mm -hmm. like I said, I'm taking it. I want surprises galore. I want, right. she, she's already changed mm -hmm. the way I'm looking at this. I can't compare it to the book anymore. Mm -hmm. Matt Ruff, Matt Ruff wrote an amazing book in my opinion, but I'm going to leave it what it is. Better. But Misha yeah. Green is making some amazing art and, and, and going even further with the story. So I'm going to let that be the Bible for me right now. So whatever happens, I'm either going to love it or I'm going to be like Receive Misha it. Green. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to just take it in. Now, <laughs> as for favorite character, I have to say, and this is more on a personal note, it's actually Uncle George for me. Mm. Because Uncle George reminds me of my dad. Because wow. Uncle George is the one who nurtured Atticus's love for reading, his love right. for mm -hmm. science fiction and horror, and actually read. He broke it down. Now, where Uncle George was nurturing it, Montrose was shutting it down. And mm -hmm. I think they're going to probably show it. You know, um, there were some things that Montrose used to do to Atticus to say, Why are you reading that with them white boys? You know, with them white, them, them crackers, them racists. You know, mm -hmm. but. George was the one who told him, look, you can separate the art from the artist. You can do this. Mm -hmm. Read this, but look deeper into what you're reading. You know, mm -hmm. and that's why, you know, like going back to the first part of the show, the beginning with him and the, um, the older woman, this is all we got. Mm -hmm. And I know that the person who wrote it was probably an asshole. Or not, nope, not probably, was a racist mm -hmm. asshole. But mm -hmm. the story that he told captured me. Mm -hmm. it, 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 brought, it opened up my mind. And it's not John Carter that opened up my mind. It's the fact that Mars is there and that Mars mm -hmm. is inhabited and that there are people in, on another planet or um, a, ra a race, um, a race, just a bunch of new folks that we never met. So his imagination flies, which goes to the first scene of the show. Mm -hmm. Princess on Mars. Right. His overactive imagination. I'm in this, this mm -hmm. re crappy reality, but my mind is going to take me somewhere and my hero is going to get me out of this. Because mm -hmm. like when Jackie Robinson popped up, it, his face, mm -hmm. the, Atticus's face was me. You know, yeah. that like Atticus is me in that in that sense. And that's why I say Uncle George is my favorite because he mm -hmm. nurtured him. He wasn't mm -hmm. afraid to say as a black boy, he failed. Yeah, he failed him. He didn't save him from Montrose. But as a black boy, he let him be imaginative. He let him be um, adventurous, thoughtful. <laughs> and as he became the man he is today. You can still see he had he's he has that fatherly um, grasp on him. Yeah, I'm your uh -huh. uncle, but you're like my son, you know. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. fact, and that's why I say I love that they made they get they brought Diane in because you can see George is probably one of those men. Man, if I had a son, if I had a son, I love my daughter. My daughter is my everything. But if I had me a boy, Atticus is the if I had that boy. Mm -hmm. But I, I just love the fact that's why. I, but I do love the fact that he let him be. He didn't mm -hmm. downgrade him. He didn't say black mm -hmm. people ain't supposed to be reading that. Black people ain't supposed to be. That. Black man shouldn't be doing this. Atticus, grow. Mm -hmm. You know he was he was the gardener. Atticus is the uh is the flower. Mm -hmm. he, he he did you know the right amount of uh, nutrients. Gave him the water. Let him grow. And mm -hmm. he turned out to be an amazing flower, you mm -hmm. know, cock diesel as hell, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but an amazing flower. You know, you know what? I mean? Can I say something? Because we said it several times here about separating the art artists from the art. I can get all that, but I, I, mm -hmm. I, I will say this. I look at it this way. 
they have some despicable human beings who have shown that they're capable of producing great art. But this is just me. Mm -hmm. It's not a testament to their humanity at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're still shit. Yeah. Oh, their humanity. They just, they just so happen to do. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't allow do mm -hmm. You discounted your humanity. I don't care what you yeah. produced. You right. discounted your humanity. Even if you were capable of doing this, maybe there was a spark that you could have went another way and nurtured that, but mm -hmm. you're still a despicable human being who right. just happened. Well, yeah, and right. I mean, you know, and this will be somewhat our roll call because we're going to end it like that. Yeah, sorry. I just oh, no, no. 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 What, what, I, what, I, what I love is the fact that, you know, let's look at what's going on today. It's the same thing today. You know, even if mm -hmm. you use the cancel culture or the Me Too movement, um, we could look at our own and say, you know, Robert Kelly, probably a trash human being. Which I never owned any of his music, never supported. He was always a pervert. But go I on. Say, I, I, don't know. I, ain't I know problem. what you're saying. I listen. I, I never, stepped in the name of love a couple I did, times. Exactly. Many <laughs> have. Oh, I may have done that but one. never again. <laughs> okay. And, and you never see, again. my thing is, I was a huge Bill Cosby fan. Yeah. And I still am on the art side as a human being for what he's been convicted of. Sickening for me. Mm -hmm. But if the Cosby show come on and it's the aunt is the grand it's, it's the grandparents anniversary episode and they start singing <laughs> my baby. I bet you my big ass is going to be enjoying that. <laughs> if fat Albert comes on, mm -hmm. I will be watching it. Yeah, that's a whole conversation. You know, but I, I, get it. I, I can get that. Or I'm not going to lie because the verdict is still out and I'm not going to name this artist and I have to mm -hmm. delve deeper, you know. The, well, I'm just going to say Michael Jackson. So Michael didn't touch him. This is, look, because we're all, we, we all have some problematic phase. Mm -hmm. Let me just, but yes. this is how I look at it. I love, what's his name? I love uh, the apartment series. Roman Polanski, mm -hmm. but when I found out what he did, yeah, which I didn't know he'd done the penis, I'm like, shit, I watched something. He, but I, I'd say, okay, well, pre finding out that's safe, yeah. finding out, fuck Everything, you, not, yeah, right, not you gotta go, it. right. So that right. I'm not gonna lie, I've rationalized it that way. Mm -hmm. now, Michael mm -hmm. Jackson, well, I'm good, uh, we'll see. I'm, hey, Billy, I'm, G, I'm on, Jackson. I'm moonwalking, I'm sorry, no, and you know. Sorry. I, I got that's stuff. a whole that's a complicated one I, it, it, it's, you it's know what that's hard. a whole different different podcast right. zoom thing mm. or whatever yeah well, yes. well, well my, the, that's a the, difficult thing it is it is and it's it's, difficult because i don't want to ever when like, you hero train yeah, yeah. betraying yeah. people that because of these people's actions something absolutely horrendous happened i don't yeah. want any parts of that yeah right so on that note, it didn't, we didn't end with a downer, but before we go. And maybe, Atticus is fine. Just had to say oh, that. Okay. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. I, you, you, you should. Cause I, I was, I was, I was fine. trying not to objectify, but he I is did. fine. You know okay. what? Hey, you shouldn't have <laughs> took his shirt off. Give what you get. So guess As what? As a I'm man, I am offended. Remember oh, old man. boy, the uh, Watchmen? Remember that? Boy. Yeah. Oh, I, you know. I must have rewound that clip many times. <laughs> So on that note, the sun is going down, and ladies and gentlemen, because you're in Devon County. Oh, but when Letitia was hot and all that, you know, but anyway. Right, she's fiery. Mm -hmm. Oh, exactly. but so I wasn't talk talking about, about blue dicks. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm enough. And we all know. You know what? Speaking of, when is the Candyman going to come out? He's um, remaking it. I think Ooh. they did. Candyman. Remember he remade it? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, or the yes, remake yeah. is starring the him. The remake is starring him. But um, yeah. see, if you watch. Oh, he's, he's going to be the Candyman? Well, we don't know. And he's from New Orleans. You got to see the trailer. No, no, no. You got you to gotta see the trailer. Just watch the trailer. I'll send you the trailer. But okay. if you watch the show with no name, episode three, we did have a story that mentioned Candyman. You can check Let it out by and, hitting the card yeah. that'll pop up here. See, I got to think about it like we're on YouTube. And so, I'm just giving you the segues. Thank you. Come on. Look at her. That best friend. That's my best friend. Go best friend. 
<laughs> so on that note, ladies and gentlemen, the sun is going down. And since mm-hmm. you are in Devon County, it is time for your ass to go because you are not wanted here. Yeah, all black and brown people exit now. Yeah, it's time for you to go. <laughs> time to go. Turns may <laughs> be acknowledged and may be given. But on that note, please like, comment, share this video subscribe also hit that subscribe button you know it tell them good dear hit that big red button with the right with the little white letters only takes a second blue thumbs up blue thumbs are always cool also there is a bell ring that bell turn your notifications to all so you'll be notified every time i drop something new as you can see i always have great guests ladies and gentlemen this was the first episode of Welcome to Devon County. I want to thank my beautiful friends, Gadir McHale, Melissa Newell, Ashley Bro, and sat, she had to leave because she was doing big Hollywood things. Ms. <laughs> bye bye. Aurier, who she said she'll, she sent in a message. I'll be there next week. And I hope everybody who's watching, I hope y'all come back next week. But keep in mind, mm-hmm. only when the sun is up, you are allowed in Devon County because once it go down, you haul your ass out of it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for being on with me. And until next Thanks. week, y'all know the drill. I say it on every show. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wash your feet. Wash your ass. Y'all out. And wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. <laughs> wear a damn it. <laughs> <laughs>